I'm pleased to report that the situation in Chernobyl is stable. In terms of radiation, I'm told it's the equivalent of a chest X ray. No, Chernobyl is on fire. And every atom of uranium is like a bullet, penetrating everything in its path. Metal, concrete, flesh. Now, Chernobyl holds over three trillion of these bullets. Some of them will not stop firing for 50,000 years. Tell me how to put it up. You are dealing with something that has never occurred on this planet. Oh, guys, contain the spread of misinformation. What will happen to our boys? The pain is unimaginable. From three days to three weeks, they're dead. I see, and you cannot touch him. Do you understand? <sighs> Because you know I question you is the truth. There is no truth. Madness. Greetings, brothers and sisters. I hope everyone is doing well. Mm. Wow, do I have one for you today. <clears throat> now, you all remember the book of Ecclesiasticus, right? Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, excuse me, the thing that hath been it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Chernobyl, right? Chernobyl. Now, this lesson here is called Wormwood the drop of death, okay? Now, before I get into my lesson for the original with the scriptures, I would like to point out that this is the Sabbath, okay? February 18th, 2023. I literally made a lesson warning people the air of Wormwood, February 26, 2022. So I've already said this before. So this will be the last time I speak on Wormwood. It seems like no one's paying attention. You you may see me a little frustrated. You may see me a little upset because as a minister, I get upset because one, everyone's distracted with all types of different things. Everyone's distracted with the itching airs of 
whatever draws them to want to serve the most high some people's a race for some people's identity for some people it's a promise for some people it, it's it's a gift some people it's a love for some people's forgiveness but no matter what you are drawn to, even those things can be distractions because the truth is what will set you free. And the truth is based on Christ, okay? Now, in this lesson, Heir of Wormwood, here's my intro. This is the biblical connection of Ukraine and Russia as a sign to the world that Wormwood is coming. Now, I haven't never said that Wormwood was there. I said Wormwood was coming. Now, I'm going to prove to you right now that Wormwood is here. Yes, I said is here. Okay. Now, if you haven't watched that lesson, I would suggest you watch that lesson before this one. But hey, to each his own, you don't want to listen, whatever. In some sense, I understand people want to rush and watch. Yeah, you, you probably want to rush, but to each his own, right? And you can see, this is my lesson here. I created this. There's only two slides. And yes, I even use the the angel that's in Chernobyl. This angel is in Chernobyl, Ukraine. The same Chernobyl that belonged to Russia years ago. The same Chernobyl that Russia has conquered today again. The same Chernobyl that HBO just made, or sh I shouldn't even say just made, the, the little mini series was made in 2019. So you wasn't gonna watch it because at the end of 2019, we know what happened. The lockdowns and the, <clears throat> and the jabs, right? So the plans were all ready to show people. I'm gonna even, oh snap, I'm gonna even show you through the very words, the very places that things are being publicized, so to speak, or not publicized. I'm gonna show you that the Most High is sending a message just through the words alone. Okay, now, I think in this lesson, we also went over how um, you, Ukraine was the Ukrainian soldiers, Nazis, but Ukrainian soldiers, they were crucifying people. I put that video on. And everyone was like, glory to Ukraine. And, oh, how sad. And you know, Russia, well, first of all, Ukraine is Russian territory. It was from the beginning. But make that very clear. History, that's history. It's like, for example, you know, now you make a treaty, and yes, it may divide territory, but that doesn't, you know, negate the fact that it originally belonged to Russia, right? For example, you see America. Most of the maybe Southern going into maybe like that Oklahoma going into, you know, California area. That was belonging to Mexico and the Indians. Not, not sure. I don't want to get the, the, the specific tribe wrong. I don't think it was the Mayans, but there were different, you know, tribes where it belonged to Mexico. Texas belonged to Mexico. Oklahoma, in fact, Oklahoma is 
a term for natives. Um, so it's Texas, uh, New Mexico, uh, Arizona, California. California was an island before, but hey, whatever. Okay, and so forth and so forth. That those properties still belong, they were taken by what treaties, they were taken by war, and so forth and so forth. So I went over all that good stuff, right? And I said, this was the era of Wormwood. The era of Wormwood was coming. I said that, okay? Now, this is in respects to understanding what's occurring today, okay? So, for example, and excuse the language, there is language in these videos. I don't control it, neither do I know how to edit languages out, so please watch. Trade to trail Friday, 20th and carrying hazardous materials as flames lit up the sky in northeastern Ohio. The evacuation order is for anyone within a mile radius of the crash site. These aren't these aren't store clouds. This is a fucking the fucking shit in the burnout in these policies. This is not fucking store clouds. Look at it. Officials are claiming that the air and water are safe. Residents say they can still smell chlorine. They complain about their eyes watering when they go outside. And one woman says the noxious air killed her chickens. Out of nowhere, he just started coughing really hard and just shut down and went very fast. Look at all these fucking crows. I'm not kidding. This is within 10 miles of East Palestine. I remember, and it's not funny, but it, you know, I remember in one of my CERN lessons, I showed something occurring to Cleveland, Ohio, and one of someone had commented and say, oh, I'm from Cleveland, and that's not what it was, and, you know, saying I was a conspiracy theorist. And I said bad things was coming to Cleveland area, Ohio, and I wonder what he thinks now. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where, as a minister, I try and teach people, but I am also the one who hates to say, I told you so, because I don't want to do that. I want you to listen to the words of the Most High. That's the reason for putting the lessons up. That's the reasons for ministering to people so that you listen so that you don't have to be affected. But for those in Babylon, well, they seem to be hard headed. Okay. Now, Here's a, another situation. Now, how come this one wasn't a focus? Before you scroll away, this is not Ohio. Yes, I know. This is just as big as Ohio, and you would automatically think that it is, right? Well, you're wrong. This is today. This is Chicago. This is the south suburbs of Chicago in Chicago Heights. This is a major factory. Guess what they're burning? Take one fucking guess. What's in the factory besides the furniture? Get your affairs in order. I hope you know what that means. Drop it in the comments for other people if they don't understand what get your affairs in order means. Now, 
I'm quite sure this video got a million views by now. What if someone told this sister that what you're saying is in the Bible to get your affairs in order? I've been saying it for years. <laughs> if you told someone this, would, would they turn to the most high? I can say, literally hold up the verse in the Bible, okay, Second Ezra, chapter, what, what is it, 14? Say, get your house in order. But they won't listen. But, sister, you literally saying the same thing that has been prophesied years ago. And you think the most high... For anyone who thinks that the Most High enjoys death, remember, he did not create it. I want you to understand that. For the wages of sin equals death. Sin came from who? Satan. Okay. In fact, how do we know death belongs? To Satan, Christ had to go down to get the keys, right? Because death belonged to Satan for a time. But the Most High doesn't, he doesn't enjoy creating something just for it to be destroyed, just to see your children die, just to see your parents grow up and grow old in sickness and to not remember who you are. The Most High didn't create this. You, you, you forget it. So a lot of people put the blame on the Most High when the Most High doesn't take any joy, any pride, any happiness in seeing his creation come to naught. Remember that. And and, it, and you know what? We can even see that with the example that he gave us, his son. He said, I don't want you to die. So I'm going to send one greater than you all, my son. He's going to show you the way, which is the gospel. He's going to die for your sins. He's going to go down to hell. He's going to get the keys and then resurrect. What part of hatred does that say? What part of despising does that say? That says nothing but love. But hey. Hey, okay, so all I'm saying is, as we progress into this lesson, brothers and sisters, if you know people, you may want to tell them because remember, who shared with you? Who was it who told you? <laughs> who was it? Who told you, who prophesied in the Bible, literally, literally. Now, literally, almost a week ago that the final choices were coming. Who told you? Now, let, let, let's bring that that video back. Okay. Now you had this reporter get arrested for reporting it. I've seen that. Everyone saw that. The fish is dying. That means your water's bad. And then they talking about egg prices going up. Look what that does to your food. 
I said the final choice. Now, you heard, maybe you didn't see about Chicago. Maybe you didn't even hear about Oklahoma. Maybe you didn't hear. Now, if I didn't see properly, the fire is here and they are there. You're still going to get blown up. But if you're going to be in the vicinity, why is it taking you so long to get water there? Call me crazy. Just sitting there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. You know what? People like this, they make the movies look smarter than the actual people. Because at least in the movies, people got the nerve enough to move with haste. No, no, no. You know, you're just sitting around. Yeah, yeah, you know. No. Not a thing in sight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't tell me that they don't got extinguishers and, and a water hose. It's a chemical plant. They're required to have these things, right? But, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> what do I know? I mean, it's just whatever, right? So you may have not even heard about that. Some people may have. Hey, whatever. But how do we put this into the Bible? Oh my, I'm telling you right now, I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm angry for you. I'm angry for the most high mostly because the most high could snap his fingers and the world could be finished. But yet you have to think of this. As much evil and pain and suffering that is going on in the world, he is still trying to allow just a little bit for more people to come and be safe. Right? Now, check, check out, some people may say, well, what do I think about the revivals that's going on around the world? I'm going to tell you one thing. If they are not prophesying to the people what is going to happen, it's a waste of time because this is not the time to be singing in worship, is it? I mean, you can praise the Most High all the time, but death, we're in Revelation. Someone could be gone in the next 60 minutes. Wait, 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 wait. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. <laughs> Y'all thought, and I saved this, most high knows, I saved this for CERN because I'm bringing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got an additional portion for CERN. We're going to bring it in the month of March. Most high will and pray for me that I get it out. 
Shit. Watch this. Let's see, let's see. While you were sleeping, while you were sleeping, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Ready? Abrahamic family house, <clears throat> one world religion, opens March 1st. <laughs> okay? Opens March 1st. The house of a mosque, a synagogue, and a church. You see, America, you over there, you don't matter. South America, you don't matter. That's what they're saying. They're like, whatever. We're going to move on with our plans in the Middle East because you don't matter. Now, you want to know how bold that is of Satan? One world religion? And yes. America has to be gone for the one world religion and the one world order to what? To occur. I said it. You know why? Because America's too prideful. They can't take individuals in this. They need submission. The only country that you can legally purchase guns, legally purchase weapons, you could purchase anything. The only country, they need submission. And the US gives the world a false sense of sinful freedom. Prove me wrong. But you wanna know how, how bold this is watch this okay here let me let me see this <clears throat> let me try and pull up a map okay and i want to show y'all something i want to show y'all <clears throat> something so take for example this map here okay the uae united Arab emirates this is where the new world religions are taking place you would have thought ain't no way in an all muslim region no 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 you would have thought, right? Now, watch this one second. Check this out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, a directional. So, from one place to another. Right? Let's see. What? What? Let me let me let me see. Hold on. I want I want to get this for y'all. Now. Oops. Oh man. Let me see. Sorry. Let me bring that back. That way. Some of y'all been sleeping, right? <laughs> Most high, they not listening. People not listening. I'm gonna try and help them one last time, Most High. Okay. So what you see, the blue outlining is from the UAE to Shush or the province of Shush, which is Iran, okay? 
where it, why am I pointing to Iran? I said it for many, many years. You need to pay attention. Okay, now watch this. Now, what is shush? Shush is also Susan, okay? It's also known as Shushan. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I think they're going to see. Oh, we'll go with this one here. Okay, it's the land of Elam, okay? Or it's known as Susa. See that? Susa. And then Shush, all they did, brothers and sisters, was cut off the A-N. It's the same exact thing. Susan, which is Hebrew, Susa, Shushan, Shushana, okay? It's the land of Elam. Now, why is this of any importance? Check this out. Let me hear it. deviating a little bit. Y'all getting juice right here. I'm letting you know. Now in Jeremiah 49, 38, and I'll, I'll 35, thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, I will break the bow of Elam. Where's Elam? Iran. And they also, by the way, if you didn't know, watch this one. They spell it with an I, right? Elam province, Iran. Wait, wait, wait. It's this whole region, by the way. It's this whole region all the way to Abaddon down there. Yes, Abaddon, I said it just like in Revelations. Okay. Elam, the chief of their might. And upon Elam, I will bring the four winds for the four quarters of heaven and will scatter them towards all the winds. And there shall be no nation whither the outcasts of Elam shall not come. Now the children of Israel were there and some are still. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord. And I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. I will set my throne. <clears throat> I will set my throne, who is that? The Most High, in Elam, and will destroy from thence the king and princes, saith the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the later days, the later days, the late. Oh, that's right now. Wait a second. So now Satan is putting his one world religion right in the vicinity where the most highest throne is going to be set. Same legion. You know why? Wait, 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 watch this. Watch this, watch this. Uh, you ever heard of the Garden of Eden? Everything here in the Middle East will soon turn green after the destruction. That's Isaiah 11. Everything will turn back to its new order when new heaven comes down. Oh, but I'm, I'm getting too far for you, right? So while you thinking that Oh, you know, nothing's happening in prophecy or people are just doing their own thing. And then they do it on March 1st. I'm telling you, this is going to be one heck of a year. This is the new year. Excuse me. The uh, uh, the fourth, if I'm not mistaken. Let me, let me see. Oh, no, that's the new year, March 1st, because the new year always falls on the fourth day of the calendar. Okay, according to the Enochian calendar and the books of remembrance, that's opening on the most high's new year, which means this is a direct insult to the most high. So I'm telling you, just as one prophecy is happening, 
more is happening. I'm gonna get into this more in my CERN lesson. Oh boy, we're gonna get into Egypt. We're gonna get into the Middle East and this. And guess what? I got a surprise because we even go into CERN and it's gonna be called Antarctica. Oh yeah, I got something for y'all there. But nevertheless, let's begin. Wormwood. The drop of blood. Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight, five through nine. For they that are after flesh, after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So had you been of the most high, you should have been looking for what? How to connect things spiritually. Simple. Everyone distracted. Ain't no one seen the Abrahamic Accords. Well, and, and I have to start the CERN back with Egypt again and with Moses and Joseph because we're in those times. I'm gonna show you later, right? And, and that CERN lesson. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. See, I'm at peace, brothers and sisters, and I am trying to help you be at peace to know what's occurring. This is why, wait, wait, watch this. This is why when I made that lesson, I tried to put people's life at peace by knowing what is coming before it comes so you can prepare, so you don't have to be worried. That's called being at peace. Some people living in Babylon said, well, is that water gonna touch me? Is that gonna affect me? Well, sh should you listen back then, you wouldn't have to be saying those questions. Duh, <laughs> I I'm sorry, I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm not angry for you. I'm Now I'm angry for the most high. How many times the most high gotta send messengers, ministers, prophets, servants of the most high to sit there and tell you he don't want you to be destroyed. But you, oh no, my job. Oh no, I can't sell my homework. The most high didn't ask you for any of that. The most high didn't ask you. The most high does not care about your house, about your job, about your car, because in Matthew chapter six, he said is what is more valuable than the birds in the sky? What is more valuable than clothes on your back? Your life. So by you saying, oh no, well, you know, I just got to give a two weeks notice or, oh, my job, you know, I don't know. Or, you know, my mama, you know, they don't want me to leave. And yeah, you know what? Just die with them. That's what's going to happen. I'll be the first one to tell you because that's what the scripture says. You want to be with the flesh? Guess what? You're going to get the things that come with those who are in the flesh. The wages of sin equals death. Oh, I'm angry. I, like I said, I'm not angry for you. I'm angry for the most high. I'm angry for people getting trafficked every day. I am angry for the, the children who's, uh, and the people whose organs are being stolen. I'm angry because Another day that the most high waits for people who don't listen, there's people who's being kidnapped and tortured and screaming and begging for the most high to say, please come now. And what are you doing? No, uh, uh, well, you see, my situation ain't like, who cares? Who cares? I said it, who cares? At this point, 
you selfish if you say anything like that. You selfish. People, people be in trafficked every day. Organ harvest every day. People being kidnapped every day. People, people, there's, you know what? There's people who are forced to have abortions because they're trafficked. Because they're of, they've been kidnapped for satanic cults. And, and you got the nerve to complain about your house or your car or your property or your family. Hey, you don't listen. Whatever comes to you, you deserve. It's as simple as that. Because, hey, huh, this not going to be forever. We're not going to be able to, to YouTube. You're not going to be able to get lessons. You're not going to be able to read the Bible all the time. Second Baruch, I didn't share that in previous lessons. Second Baruch teaches that. There will be no time to even pray. You think you're going to read? We're going to have to be on our feet worldwide. For to be carnally minded is death. So, yeah. Let, let, let's get that. Let's get that word, right? Carnal. I'm going to show you what carnal. Sensual. What is sensual? Given to the indulgence of the appetites, sued, luxurious. Well, I, I just, you know what? Let, let's let's break it down more. Let's break it down more. Sensual, it's carnal, concerning the body. In distinction from the spirit or intellect of affecting or pertaining to the physical senses. Endowed with feeling, see sensuality. Gratification of the senses, lewd, unchaste, voluptuous pleasure. I'm keep going. I'm hurt. I'm gonna hurt someone's feelings today, and that's okay, because you know what? On my judgment, the Most High will say, "You did what I told you. You were tough, and you tried to save them with fear. You tried to get people to move." Like it says in the book of Hebrews, move with fear. Oh no, you you got this going and that going. Hey, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Right? <laughs> Man. So you can see, endowed with feelings, being in your emotions connected with gratification of the senses and no one is more connected with gratification than those who live in babylon america right and in europe too oh yeah most high coming for you too because america uh europe is a partaker canada is a partaker all those european nations is a partaker of what babylon they built Babylon. The taxes, the social security, all that financial structure goes back to Europe. Moving forward. But the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And you know what? That's why everyone who's soft, cupcake, muffin top, all of that, all those people who got excuses why they can't do what the Most High said is because they don't want to follow what the Most High says. For it is subject, not, it is not subject to the law of God. They, they, they don't want to be subject. They don't want to be in submission to the Most High. They just want to do what they want to do. 
as a minister, I am a stern minister. Maybe in this lesson, if you still watching, you can tell because when congregants come to me, I don't care about excuses. We talk about heaven or hell. Both of them got the letter P. Both of them is identified with P. You know how? Pain or pleasure, and you get them both forever. Which one do you want? I don't care about excuses. And people can see who are with me in person. I don't allow myself to make excuses. I'm like, well, I dropped the ball. I'm going to do 10 times better than what I did before. That's it. And then 10 times better again. And then even better and better and better again. But you see, those who are carnal minded, it is enmity. Now, do you know what enmity means? Do you know what enmity means? Okay. Now you remember Genesis 3, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and thy seed and her seed. Now you remember, why is it so hard for a lot of women to come into the truth? Money, right? Status, right? Riches, right? The women want the, what was I learned the, the other day? The, the women want the 666. They want the six foot man. They want the six figure man. And they want the man with the six, you know, secret members. They want the 666. They want enmity. That's just a little brief. But enmity means to be what? Against your mind is against the most high. It means to have a friendship with the world. A friendship. Can you believe that? <laughs> a friendship. You scratch my back and scratch yours, right? Friends, friends forever, BFF. So to be friends with the world is to be an enemy with the most high. You heard what Christ said. You're either going to love one and hate the other. You can't serve two. Verse 8, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be. That the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now, I'm just going to go straight into Galatians from here. Okay. Oh, I'm angry today. I'm angry moving forward. The righteous upset. I'm angry. Galatians 7 and 8. Now, says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. That's deep. That's deep. I don't think many people are going to listen to this anyway, but hey, blessed for those of you who listen and take heed, I love you. For those of you who don't, I still love you, but the scripture is going to stand. <laughs> okay. I, I pray you listen now. It says, for he that, or excuse me, be not deceived, the most high God is not mocked. Look at that ridicule. What is the greatest land to ridicule the most high outside of Rome? With the Constantine emperor. Well, it is, per se, Babylon. And then, you know, the next one would be a tie to me, right? But I would say China and then the so to speak, Middle Eastern nations. 
Why? Because they talk a good game, but they're all lies. All right? Now in the Quran, for example, it says that Muslims can deceive people. And that is the will of their God. Yeah, sounds like peace to me. Not. So God is not mocked. And I know at the end of the Quran, it talks about waiting for Christ. Oh, we're going to battle. Because I'm going to tell you, that book is a waste of life. Let me tell you. <laughs> For whatsoever a man soweth, that also that shall he also reap. You want to sow into this world, you go down with the world. You want to sow into Satan, you'll go down with Satan. You want to sow to the Most High, guess what? You're gonna rise with the Most High. You're gonna sow into Christ. You're going to go and deal with trials and tribulations, just as Christ. But the only difference is when you're with the world, you never rise up when you fall, when you're not with the most high. But when you're in Christ, you may go through trials and tribulations, and we will. It is promised. But it is also promised that you will rise better than when you fell. So. Which will you sow to? Which will you invest to? I know you're like, oh, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? When are we going to get to, you know, uh, Chernobyl in Ohio? Get in there. Don't be in a rush. We're going we're gonna to touch it. Don't worry. Okay. Second Ezra's. Eight. I got fifty three. Verse, ver, uh, chap, excuse me, second as verse eight, verse fifty three to sixty one, and it reads, The root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness in the moth is hid from you, and corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. I want you to understand, what is the root of evil? Money. That means what? Your money is not going to help you right now. <laughs> right? Your, your, your money is not going to help you. What, what can your money do with this? Can your money help you with this? Your money can't help you. Can it? Well, when your food is no good? What can you, when your water is no good? What can your money do? What can you do? What can your money do when all the food is gone bad? What can your money do? Money doesn't buy happiness. It buys distractions. I said what I said. It buys distractions. Verse 40, verse 54, it says, sorrows are past and the end is showed the treasure of immortality. And in the end is showed the treasure of immortality. And therefore ask, Thou no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. For when they had taken, for when they had taken liberty, they despised the most high, thought scorn of his law, forsook his ways. Moreover, they had trodden down his righteous, and said in their heart, There is no God, yea, that knowing, and that knowing they must die. For as the things aforesaid shall receive you, so thirst and pain 
so thirst and pain, so thirst and pain are prepared for them. For it was not his will that men should come to naught, but they which be created have defiled the name of him that made them and were unthankful, 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 remember the book of Timothy, unto them, unto him which prepared life for them. And therefore is my judgment now at hand. Now they want to cry. What? Watch this, watch this, watch this, right? Right? Check this out. Excuse me. Check, check, check this out. They're going to call for God, but they won't stand up for him. I think Jesus um, transgenders himself on a number of occasions. So when, 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 when they had liberty, they which, would cre they which be created defiled the name of him that made them. Who made? Who's the creator? Christ. The Most High gave his son the ability to create. Tells us that in uh, the book of Galatians. Colossians. Second, right? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, the water, you know, how could they do this to us? I think Jesus um, transgenders himself on a number of occasions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, you know, just, just a little phrase, uh, Jesus is lamenting over Jerusalem, longing to gather Jerusalem as a mother hen gathers her chicks. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you look at um, the foot washing from John's Gospel, foot washing elsewhere in both Old and New Testament, that it, it's consistently done by, by women. And yet Jesus takes that on. People often cast that as being the servant's role. It was the woman's role. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Jesus does it and becomes the woman at that point. So what? Man, if I see him, I'd knock him out. What? Oh, when I said, when I said they blaspheme, when the Bible says they blaspheme, we're you outraged. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks. Black lives matter to you and always have. Black lives matter. Black male lives, black female lives, black tra female trans lives. And black female traffic lives matter. Black gay lives matter. Black uneducated as well as educated lives matter. Black poor as well as rich lives matter. Black homeless lives matter. Black Christians and non-Christians, black lives with disabilities matter. Black immigrants and refugees, black children and black teen lives matter. Their lives are sacred. Their lives are valuable. Their lives are precious. Their lives are important. Their lives are necessary and integral to your magnificent beloved family. So we join with them and all others who are just as sacred, valuable, precious, important, necessary, and integral to your plan of salvation to sing your praises. And I, I don't have the video, but, but wait, wait, let me, let me try and find it. it. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's bad. It's real bad, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, it, it's, it's real bad. Where, where is, uh, where is it? Where is everyone upset? They just keep on keeping on. They just keep on keeping on. There was one video, I can't find it. It was a recent one where there's a new religion that's saying that God is a woman. And even y'all seen 
they was trying to change everything in uh, England now. Where's the outrage? You want to call them when, when everything's bad. But, but keep most high say, you know what? I love the most high so much. He said, keep that same energy for when they had liberty, they despised the most high. So, so remember, remember he tried to save you. He tried to send messengers. <laughs> you know, it's so funny because people, people say, oh, don't be a Noah. Now, no, you know, Noah, he went to the people and, and oh, you know, I'm on the boat. I'm on the boat, right? The blaspheme story, right? But they say, oh, and I sent you a boat, but you were wiped away, right? You, you didn't listen. And you say, God will help me. God will help me. God will help me. One, let me tell you, that analogy is the most blasphemous thing because one, Noah didn't just sit there. He made the boat and he moved with fear. Okay. For those individuals who use this saying, oh, don't miss your boat, just believing in faith. Shouldn't it, shouldn't even say that. It's just, I hate it all together when people blaspheme the scriptures, the most high, all of the things righteous. When you had liberty, and this is how the most high is going to judge people. Liberty to do so. When you have freedom to do something. When you had the ability to move around and do this, you weren't, so why, you, you weren't even focused on that. So why are you focused now? I love, there are some people who came in, you know, the truth during COVID, but hey, you got to understand through the scriptures, as ministers and shepherds of the Most High's flock, we are allowed to ask you, why now? Why all of a sudden? Now that shouldn't stop you from continuing to follow the righteous shepherds and ministers, but you have to understand our position as to protect the flock that have been listening, right? Because we, we not gonna deal with no Judases. Oh, you take a few pieces of silver or whatever it is that you may want and, and ruin everyone else. We're not going to do that. So we're going to ask you when new newcomers, hey, it's okay. Man up, woman up, put a little hair on your chest. Okay. You was bold and prideful out in the world. Now you come to bold ministers of the most high. We got the right, all the right to ask you, well, why now? And guess what? You know, people who will run, the very people who run from that question are the people who will never submit to the most high. Because outside of the most high, you couldn't take orders. And now you want to come to the most high and still not take orders? Be gone. Be gone because the most high has a government, right? He has a body of Christ. Ministers, apostles, disciples, prophets, servants of the most high, they are the heads. You sitting there telling me that, that if Christ asked you a question, you wouldn't answer? I mean, we are disciples of Christ, so we're coming in him, right? He said, if they listen to you, then they will listen to me. If they don't listen to you, then they don't listen to me, right? That only applies if we preaching properly, right? Am I saying anything wrong here? <laughs> okay, so keep that same energy and understand the most high is not to be mocked. You want to play around? Hey. I told you this was your final, this was people in Babylon's final warning. <laughs> Before them lights go out, and I'm going to show you too. The light's about to go out soon. I'm going to show you. <laughs> I'm going to show you. All right. Shepherd of Hermes. So how should you be in these times? 
how should you be in these times? I apologize for that uh, little blank out there. How should you be in these times? One second, one moment. So I'm going to get the shepherd of Hermes. Okay. Mm. Okay, I'm going. So if you have a PDF, okay, it will be on page 39 and 40. This would be under the commandment, fifth or the fifth commandment. And it says, of sadness of heart and of patience. Okay. Now, once again, for those who have not read The Shepherd of Hermas, this is The Shepherd of Hermas here, okay? Who's under and working with Paul, okay? Romans 16 and 14, but continuing. So we're talking about Wormwood, right? The drop of death. Now, as all these things get worse in the world, brothers and sisters, I thought I'd share this with you. Chapter one reads, and we're just reading one and two, be patient, said he, and of good understanding, and you will rule over every wicked work, and you will work all righteousness. For if you be patient, the Holy Spirit that dwells in you will be pure. He will not be darkened with any evil spirit, but dwelling in a broad region, he will rejoice and be glad. So no matter where you are, if you are one with the Holy Spirit, you will always be glad. And it say life and peace. But if you are in the spirit, life and peace, right? And with the vessel in which he dwells, and this is a typo he, but you'll see why I say that dwells he will serve God in gladness, having great peace within himself. That's why the scripture said, and the spirit is life and peace. But if any outbursts of anger take place for with the Holy Spirit who is tender is straight in not having a pure place and he seeks to depart for he is choked by the vile spirit and cannot attend on the Lord as he wishes, for anger pollutes him. I'm showing you what anger does. But the Lord dwells in long suffering. What? For the Lord dwells in long suffering. What? For the law, for the Lord dwells in long suffering, aka a fruit of the spirit. But the devil in anger. The two spirits then when dwelling in the same habitation are at a discord with each other and are troublesome to the man in whom they dwell. Flesh against the spirit, right? See, this is why I tell brothers and sisters, if you have not mastered the Bible, don't read any of these. Why? Because you won't catch the comparison. You see? And that's the point. Everything that you're supposed to read in the Bible should compare. If it's an artifact or if it's a text that's ancient, it's supposed to just bring out all the scriptures again to prove its validity. Moving forward, for if any exceedingly small piece of wormwood be taken and put in a jar, is not the honey entirely destroyed? Now look what wormwood does. You can put a small piece of wormwood in a massive jar of honey and the whole amount of honey will be destroyed. Also sounds like what? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. If the eye is evil, so is the whole body. But you had to read, right? 
And does not the exceedingly small piece of wormwood entirely take away the sweetness of the honey? Just a drop. That's why I named this lesson Wormwood, the drop of death. All it takes is a drop. So that it no longer affords any gratification to its owner, but has become bitter and lost its use. But if the worm would be not put into the honey, then honey remains sweet, and it is of its and it and is of the use to its owner. You see then that patience is sweeter than honey and useful to God, and the Lord dwells in it. Now, what is honey? Honey is your patience. You tracking here? I hope so. But anger is bitterness and useless. Now, wormwood is anger because wormwood is bitter. And I'm going to show you. Don't worry. Now, if anger be mingled with patience, the patience is polluted. So you can't be angry and patient. That's called frustrated. And its prayer is not then useful to God. So you can pray in frustration. You can pray in anger and the most high is not listening to you. You know who's listening? Satan. Because the devil is in anger not the most high. I should like, sir, said I, to know the power of anger, that I may guard myself against it. And he said, if you do not guard yourself against it, you and your house lose all hope of salvation. So the wages of participating in anger is to lose salvation. To be frustrated is to lose salvation. Now, everyone who's going to be affected in Babylon through Wormwood, hey, don't you lose what? Your patience. Don't you corrupt your patience. Okay. <laughs> don't you do it. You know why? Because what did it tell us in Isaiah 33? You remember? Let's get it. Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So if you lose salvation, that means what? You have no strength. And if you don't have strength, then you have no wisdom. And if you don't have wisdom, it's because you've never gained enough knowledge to be stable in these times. You don't believe me? Let's bring it to the book of Romans chapter five. And verse three says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. If you got no patience, you get nowhere. And patience, experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not a shame, because experience means I've been through something like this before. I've been without. And experience also means that you have had enough knowledge in the Bible to know that the Most High is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him, which means I'm good. I'm good if I do what's right. If I follow what the Most High said, I'll be fine. Moving forward, back into 
the shepherd of Hermas, page 40 in chapter one, guard yourself therefore against it, for I am with you, and all will depart, and all will depart from it who repent with their whole heart, repentance. For I will be with them and I will save them all, for all are justified by the most holy angel. Here now, excuse me. Here now, said he, how wicked is the action of anger, and in what way it overthrows the servants of God by its actions, by its action, and turns them from righteousness. But it does not turn away those who are full of faith, nor does it act on them. For the power of the Lord is with them. It is the thoughtless and doubting that it turns away. It is, you didn't hear what I said. Those who get angry, they are thoughtless and they doubt, which means, which means what? They haven't been through the process of knowledge. They haven't been able to discern properly. And those who doubt, they get angry because what? What they want, they're not getting. For as soon as it sees such men steadfast, it throws itself into their hearts, and for nothing at all, the man or woman becomes embittered on account of occurrences in their daily life. As for instance, on account of their food or some superfluous word that has been uttered. So you may get angry over your food or an occurrence in life or someone said something nasty to you, or on account of some friend or some gift or debt or some such senseless affair. For all these things are foolish and empty and unprofitable to the servants of God. Yeah, it says debt is unprofitable, which means if you owe something, in this world, guess what? That's not holding you back from getting to the kingdom. Amen. <laughs> but patience is great and mighty and strong and calm in the midst of great enlargement, joyful, rejoicing, free from care, glorifying God at all times, having no bitterness in her and abiding continually meek and quiet now this patience dwells with those who have complete faith wait 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 wait, 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 wait. okay watch this watch this so we went from the thoughts right wisdom of solomon follow me wisdom of solomon chapter one Verse one says, love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth, think of the Lord with a good heart and in simplicity of heart, seek him. For he will be found of them that tempt him not and showeth himself unto such as do not distrust him. For froward thoughts, for froward thoughts separate from God and his power when it is tried reproveth the unwise. For into a malicious soul wisdom, 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 the Holy Spirit, wisdom shall be justified by her children, just as Christ said. Wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit, will flee deceit, will flee deceit, will flee deceit. If you are in error, the Holy Spirit is not with you. I don't care how holy you feel and remove from the thoughts that are without understanding. So if you have thoughts that are not of the most high, that are not leading to the most high, you do not, I repeat, you do not have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has left the temple, okay? And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Isn't this, what did just say? What you had to read. For wisdom is a loving spirit and will not acquit a blasphemer, blasphemer of his words. For God is witness of his reigns. 
and a true beholder of his heart and a hearer of his tongue. Are we speaking the same thing as scripture? It looks like Shepherd of Hermes is saying the same thing. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. You, maybe, maybe you don't believe me just yet. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 22. Okay, so what did it say? But patience is great, mighty, strong, calm in the midst of great enlargement, joyful, rejoicing, free from care, glorifying God at all times, having no bitterness in her and abiding continually meek, quiet, fruits of the spirit. Now this patience dwells with those who have complete faith. Wisdom of Solomon. I've heard this somewhere before. Chapter seven, verse 22, for wisdom, which is the worker of all things taught me for in her is understanding, spirit, holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, means not soft when you receive correction, loving the thing that is good, quick, which cannot be leaded, ready to do good, kind to man, steadfast, sure, free from care. Wait, I just seen patience is free from care, which means if you have the Holy Spirit, you have all the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Moving forward, having all power, overseeing all things and going through all understanding, pure and most subtle spirits. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. Amen. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of God and the image of his goodness. And being but one, she can do all things and remaining in herself, she maketh all things new. That's why it says, renew your mind, right? When you get baptized, okay. Maybe I'm excited, you know, just me. And in all things, in all ages, entering into holy souls, entering into holy souls, entering into holy souls, she maketh them friends of God and prophets. Yeah, the Holy Spirit can make you best friends with the Most High. For God loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom, for she is more beautiful than the sun, and above all the order of stars. Being compared with the light, she is found before. For after this cometh night, but vice shall not prevail against wisdom. So, he was talking about the Holy Spirit, right? Patience is of the Holy Spirit, fruits of the Spirit. Moving forward. But anger is foolish and fickle and senseless. Now a folly is begotten bitterness, <clears throat> wormwood, and of bitterness, anger, wormwood, and of anger, frenzy. This frenzy, the product of so many evils. Frenzy is what? The product of so many evils. Ends in great and incurable sin. For when all these spirits dwell in one vessel in which the Holy Spirit also dwells, the vessel cannot contain them, but overflows. The tender spirit then, not being accustomed to dwell with the wicked spirit, nor with hardness withdraws from such a man or woman, of course, and seeks to dwell with meekness and peacefulness. Then he withdraws from the man in whom he dwelt. The man is emptied of the righteous spirit and being henceforward filled with evil spirits. So when demonic possession comes is when, guess what? The Holy Spirit stop. And she's like, you know what? I can't deal with this. I'm out of here. Man, this person. He is in state of he is in a state of anarchy in every action, in every action, in every action, being dragged hither and thither by evil spirits. And there's a, a complete darkness in his mind as to everything good. So you thought it was just someone walking and you know screaming and you know, exorcism and all that. No. When evil spirits take over you, you can't understand good things. So that means an atheist has evil spirits because they can't understand that God is good. 
a Satanist, has evil spirits because they can't understand that God is good. Muslims have evil spirits because they can't understand that Christ saved them, right? Yeah, let, let's do away with all the crazy ideas that people have said about evil spirits because then they make people's behaviors normal and they're not. When people you see in today's world, right? When people when people are sitting there talking about there's this gender and that gender and that gender and that gender and identify me as this cat and that bat and this frog and, and this log and I'm gonna marry a tree. These are people with evil spirits. Their mind is void of good. So therefore, they are subject to do what the Bible says, call good evil and evil good. That's deep, isn't it? And this is going to all come into, don't worry. Don't worry. We, we get in there. I'm coming or for, for the wormwood. This then is what happens to all the angry. Wherefore do you depart from that most wicked spirit anger and put on patience and resist anger and bitterness and you will be found in company with purity, which is loved by the Lord. Take care then that you neglect not by any chance this commandment. For if you obey this commandment, you will be able to keep all the other commandments which I am to give you. Be strong then in these commandment in these commandments and put on power and let all put on power as many as wish to walk in them. And you know, think of it this way, right? Christ could have just appeared as a man and said, I'm here to die for your sins. One day, right? He could have said, you know, I'm just gonna be here for a week. But he spent over 30 years on earth. He suffered. He went through everything imaginable for us. And don't you think it was agonizing to him saying, man, I have to be on this earth for 30 plus years. I have to endure hunger. I have to endure the feelings of the creation of the most high pain sickness fear doubt hatred people feel hatred towards christ betrayal come on now christ with love comes patience the, the, you didn't understand that did you because Christ said the greatest commandment is love. But love is patience. We're not all grown to love immediately, are we? We love to, we're, we're, we're born to grow into love, right? Due to sin, of course. Because when we're children, we love whatever we see, right? We love the tree, we love the dirt. We'll, we'll love to kick rocks. We'll love to put our feet in the grass, right? We'll love to, you know, go in the sand and just, you know, put our feet and our toes in the sand, right? Like children, we love, as children, we love everything. This is why we're supposed to become back as children. Children of God. Just because you're 60 doesn't mean you're not a child. Just because we're 30 doesn't mean we're not a child. Just because, and... So when you understand this, you understand the power of the most high is love. But the only way you can perfect the love of Christ is by patience. Now I'm giving you gems here. You know why? Because as the wormwood comes, brothers and sisters, now we're gonna take it into the wormwood. As the wormwood is here, to stay, you will have to have patience. 
I know a lot of people are suffering. I know a lot of people are dying. You may know someone who's close to you who may die. But patience. Remember, I, I told you your why. Didn't I say that? I made the lesson from the heart. Why? Because when death comes knocking, and it is here, death is going to test you so hard that you are going to question your why. That why is going to come back up. And so help me. So help you. If love of the Most High is not your first why, then you're already a dead man or woman. Because how can how can we move forward without love? If I don't love the most high, how could I do this? If I don't love his creation, how could I do this? If I don't love my brother and my sister like I love myself, how could I do this? Because if I was in your shoes, I would want someone to tell me. And for free. <laughs> All right. Hmm. All right. Let's move forward. Now. <laughs> Jeremiah. You want to know why people are going to get angry? And I'm I'm bringing this all into we got more videos and stuff, don't worry, uh, and articles as well. But I'm bringing this all into Wormwood, okay? You want to know why people get angry? Well, let's observe. Okay. Jeremiah 9 and 1, oh, that my head were waters, and my eyes were a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they be all adulterers in assembly of treacherous men. Have mercy. And they bend their tongues like their bow for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. Look what the Most High is saying. Most of the individuals, most of the men are not valiant for truth. They are adulterers, spiritually, physically. Or what does it say? For they proceed from evil to evil and they know not me, saith the Most High, saith the Lord. Now, this is why, it, I think it also says this in Malachi, right? Take heed everyone of his neighbor. And trust ye not in any brother. For every brother brother will utterly supplant and every neighbor will walk with slanders. That means someone's going to always be talking about you. Someone's always not going to like you. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, I will melt them and try them for they, for how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh the sea. One speaketh peaceable to his neighbor with his mouth, but in his heart, but in heart he layeth his weight. That means being jealous. And he's talking about women. Isn't it funny that all women can't stand to be around women? <laughs> hey, girl, how you doing? Yada, yada, yada. Oh, I can't stand her. You know what she said? Did you see what she was wearing? Oh, her hair looked like. Females, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. That's also a curse too, ladies. That's also a curse too. Because you can't get into the kingdom with that same mindset and that attitude. There will be other women in the kingdom. 
when the resurrections occur. Imagine you thinking about Sarah like that. What do you think the Most High gonna do about Rebecca? What do you think the Most High gonna do? What about Eve? <laughs> right? You have to learn to get those emotions in check. And when you are with the Most High and you have the Holy Spirit within you, you're okay. You don't have to worry about other females. Remember that. Because you will need sisters in this journey to assist you. I can assure you. Verse eight, verse nine. Shall I not visit them for these things? Saith the Lord, shall not my soul be avenged of such a nation as this? For the mountains I will take up a weeping and wailing and for the, for the habitations of the wilderness a lamentation because they are burned up so that none can pass through them. Neither, neither can men hear the voice of the cattle. Both the fowl of the heavens and the beast are fled. They are gone. And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons. And I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. Who is the wise man that, ha that may understand this? Who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord hath spoken? that he may declare it for what the land perisheth and is burned up like a wilderness that none passeth through. The Lord saith, because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them and have not obeyed my voice, neither walk therein, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart and after Balaam, you know what Balaam was about? Getting that bag, right? Money, 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 money. Which their fathers taught them, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. I will scatter them also among the heathen whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. So, one, Israel, the children of Israel are scattered once again to the four quarters, four quarters of the world, four corners of the world, excuse me. Remember that. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider ye and call ye and call for the morning women, that they may come, and send for cunning women, that they may come, and let them make haste and take up a wailing for us, that our eyes may run down with tears, and our eyelids gush out with waters. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? Children of Israel are spoiled, especially the ones in America. They grief. We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land because our dwellings have cast us out. Yet, hear the word of the Lord, O ye women. Now, this is specifically to women. Again, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth and teach your daughters wailing and everyone her neighbor lamentation for death is come up into our windows and enter into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. Now, I want you to think. What can flow in the streets and what can creep in your windows? It says, death has come up into your windows and entered into our palaces, which is your homes, and to cut off the children and the young men. It's not water. It's air. It's toxins. Okay? It's death. I'm going to show you. <laughs> I'm going to show you. Don't worry. I am going to blow your mind. What? Okay? Now, let me finish this few verses and I'm going to get back to the worm. Speak thus saith the Lord, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field and as a handful after the harvestmen, and none shall gather them. Now, 
Remember, I told you in Second Ezra, it said what? That the men would be dying in wars, right? They would take the men, right? So this is this is crazy because the children will be cut off and the young men from the streets. It means you ain't gonna see no men. Most eyes are like, well, you didn't want the men. You you wanted to do only fans and all this crazy stuff. Everyone wanna talk about toxic masculinity. I, I'm gonna show you how uh, that and the women saying that are even a part of the problem. I'm gonna show you, prove to you. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. So instead of talking about all this money, I can sit there and flex. I know the most high. I understand the most high. Praises be to the most high. Yeah, you may got more money, yeah, you may got this kind of house. Yeah, you may got this kind of car, these kind of clothes. You may have been on this kind of vacation. But when all of it comes down to it, I know the most high. I understand the most high. And the most high loves me. That's what you should be happy about. Not about what certification you have. Not about what degree or house you have. Not about how much money you have. These are the only two things that, un that matter. Understanding the most high and knowing him. It says that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness. Loving kindness. The knock said for anyone who knows that. <laughs> okay. Judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised, Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness. For all these nations are uncircumcised and all of the house of Israel are uncircumcised circumcised in the heart oh my so when it says that the most high is coming for the children of israel throughout the four corners of the earth he also means all the gentiles that are dwelling amongst them as well oh he's coming and how is he coming hmm didn't he just say, I will feed you with wormwood and give them water of gall to drink. Now, here's your first note. Wormwood. Lana or laana. It means curse. Okay. To curse, meaning wormwood or poisonous, a cursed hemlock. So make sure you write wormwood. Make sure you write hemlock. Okay. Okay, good. Check. Now let's look at the word gall. Excuse me. Now, gall is rosh. Yes, rosh. It is a poisonous plant. Write that. Probably the poppy. You don't have to write that. Conspicuous head. You don't have to write that. Generally poison, write that. So write poison and venom. Okay. Good. Now, all those names I told you, right? Here's your FYI. Let's, let's do the work together, brothers and sisters. Wormwood. Wormwood, 1400s. Absinthe, Vermoth, and I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your mind. Okay. So before we get to the book of Revelations, I'm gonna show you a little bit. 
so that when we read the scripture, you fully understand it, okay? I was gradually coming into it and then hitting you with all the understanding, okay? Wormwood. It says, Wormwood absinthe related to Verma. Now, just keep following, all right? German Weru Mati, Weri Matau or Wermut suggests where means man and mode is courage. Now, don't have to worry about that. Coming from what? It's early use as an aphrodisiac, huh? right? <laughs> You're like, what? Okay, let's keep going. So you can see it says what? Figuratively used, however, is usually in reference to its proverbial bitter after taste. Okay, it formerly was used to protect clothes and bedding from moths and fleas. Okay, you're like, what? Now, their moth is also white wine flavored with aromatic herbs. Wormwood, okay. The name of an aromatic herb formerly used in the flavoring of liqueur or liquor, okay? But when you think of white wine, you think of what? Distilled vinegar, right? Maybe you think of salad dressing, different things like that, right? Okay. Now, so let's continue. I wanted y'all to know hemlock. A hemlock is a poisonous plant native to Europe, transplanted to North America. Came from the word hemlick, name of a poisonous plant. Okay, hem is a root word for poison. Who would have thought that, all right? Now, let's, let, let, let's check out these terms here. In the East Sword, it says hemlock is a poison, an infusion or decoction of a poisonous plant. Now, look at this decoction. It says the act of boiling a substance in water. Huh? <laughs> huh? Look, look, look. The liquor in which a substance has been boiled, water impregnated with principles of any animal or vegetable substance boil in it. Okay, you're like, what? Minister Yashab, I'm not a big with the science. Okay, the caution. It says liquor in which an animal or vegetable substance has been boiled. Act of boiling in water. A boiling down. To boil down. To cook. To ripen. Now, you ever heard of the term about the frogs? <laughs> you know, in the boiling water, they don't realize it too. They can't feel it anymore. That's how people in Babylon are like. Hey, you know, I don't recognize until your legs are taken from right underneath. Taken from right underneath, right? The act of boiling. But before I move forward, remember I, 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 I spoke about how all this toxic masculinity and, you know, how you are missing the man. And you see what they did, right? Man, I saw this. Who knows what AstraZene is? Now look at this. Look at this. These are both males. The, the one on the bottom is a female. We affectionately refer to as Darnell. He's a genetic male that not only acts like a female, he lays eggs like a female. He, she 
has been exposed to atrazine all of her his her life. I, I don't even really know how to reference it. This is Darnell's third clutch. So Darnell has sons and daughters that we've grown up. You can see eggs in the bottom. This is actually her second clutch for today. He, she has been copulating for getting close to 24 hours. This is probably one of the most remarkable things I've seen in my work. But I personally have mixed emotions. I'm very excited about the science and trying to understand the mechanism. But on the other hand, I am worried. This is the most common contaminant in ground and surface water and drinking water. And the level of atrophy that it took to make this male turn into a female is three times less than it's Three times less than what's actually in uh, the Babylonian drinking water. So, so when you say that, you know, men are turning gay and all this stuff, you whore Babylon. You have put chemicals in the water to turn people gay. So now you can go and to that cousin or that friend of yours and say, let me show you a video and show you why you are not and you were never born gay. It's because they put things in the water, you shower in it, you, you take a bath in it, you drink it, it's mixed in your food. Okay, the most high only knows what else. I mean, heck, we know harp is in 18 countries of the world harp also creates storm clouds who's to say they don't got this storm cloud to rain drops of hormonal what antrazine to cause men to be gay And I'm certain it works on the same effect for women. They got weapons to turn people to unnatural affection. And you thought the Bible was lying when it says, we fight not against flesh and blood, but principalities of darkness. That's what I said there. I, said, I saw this and my jaw was dropped. I was like, this is this this scientist is a sodomite, but he he can't understand because he's carnal. That being you just created a gay frog, which means what? Being homosexual. Being a sodomite is not natural. You created it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Brothers and sisters, you see all the, the alphabet train? What have they done to our brothers and sisters? What have they done? But you see, when you do not accept the Most High, when you do not accept Christ, you are allowed to have a world of demons in you. Think about this. They put it in the water for the frog to turn into a female. Why are men and women turning out of their natural gender. Brothers and sisters, this is why you got to pray for people. Because our warfare is bigger than what you can imagine. Imagine them cooking in it. Uh, imagine them drinking it. And going to the gym, sweating. Man, Esau is the end. Look what you've done, Esau. Look what you've done. Water is supposed to be pure. Water is supposed to be as Christ. He is the living water. He is eternal water. You, We can't even get 
fresh water. Look at the back of your bottles, all kinds of minerals. Those, those didn't come from the most high. The most high don't need a nutrition label. He created it. You got people thinking, man, I, you got people and kids thinking, am I gay or, you know, is it, am, was I born this way? No, you wasn't born that way. The, the, this is the beginning of Wormwood, brothers and sisters. And it happened where? While everyone was locked down in the world, because you was in your house, you couldn't go nowhere. Everyone was getting toilet tissue instead of fresh water. And the water that they was getting, they was getting from the tap water, right? Because because then then they had the nerve to say, well, uh, the water is BPA. Listen here. I don't care what no one tells me about uh, BPA nothing. You know why? One, everybody has been exposed to it. Two, um, astrazine is in tap and public resourced water, not bottled water. So don't sit there and tell, well, the but 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 bottled water, unless you have some companies like uh, Aquafina and Coca-Cola. Well, Coca-Cola is own owns Aquafina and and Nestle owns a few brands. If you get those waters, you yeah, forget that. No, we're not doing that. But other than that, look what they're doing. The most I said, hey, you don't want to listen. You, brother says, I don't think you understand how deep this goes. How deep, how deep this goes to turning animals. And you know, they literally are telling you the truth. Why? Because science says we got to do the trials on the animals first. Trials on the animals first. Trials on the animals. And then what, like, who comes up with this stuff? I will give you the answer soon. I'll give you the answer, okay? <laughs> this, this, this is crazy, all right? Crazy, okay? And then you see the word gall. In the animal economy, the bile, bitter, yellowish green fluid secreted in the glander substance of the liver, so forth and so forth, rancor, malignity, anger, bitterness of mind. So understand, right, if you're in Babylon or if you're in a part of the world where wormwood is going to hit you, because it's not going to be everywhere, but if you're in a part of the world, be prepared for angry people. Be prepared for people to, 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 what? Test your patience. And that's why I read to you and the shepherd of Hermes, brothers and sisters, you better be patient and understand your why. Because these spirits is about to come out full force. I am going to show you more. We're not finished. Okay? I'm not finished. Now, when you see Wormwood here in the E sword, you see different words. Wormwood going to symbolic of bitter. <clears throat> and hemlock, sorrow, poisonous plants, okay? Now, let's see if I had any more. I think I had maybe one more, I'm not sure. Okay, I can still use just this one. 
just go back to Wormwood real quick. Okay. Absinthe. I want I want to get that word absinthe to you. Also, check it out. Absinthe means wormwood, bitter, pale green alcoholic liquor distilled from wine mixed with wormwood. Essence of wormwood, abstinium, abstinithum, excuse me, wormwood, absintheon, okay, which is perhaps Persian, as spawned is the same meaning. So it figuratively means bitter sorrow, okay? That's what it means. Now, watch this. Let's see if they got it. Here, we'll do this. <clears throat> Potent green aniseed flower, alcoholic spirit. Woody shrub, bitter uh, aromatic taste, ingredient veer moth and absinthe and in medicine. Understand. They're going to place things in the medicine. They're going to place things in the food. Anything that water can be used for, they're going to finish. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I hadn't introduced it a year ago. I'm trying to tell you. Look what it says, used in cocktails in France and Italy, red and white vinegar. And did you notice that it was mentioning in the beginning aniseed flavored alcoholic spirit? So it's going to be as if people are, you know how when people are drunk, they act differently? That's going to be the spirit of people who's affected by the wormwood. They're going to act like those spirits that are concealed. But the spirits is just gonna come out now. Okay, now watch this. The seed of anise used in cooking in herbal medicine. Can you get a break? So don't be surprised if you start seeing like fast food and restaurants start having issues with food. People getting sick, things like that. You, mark my words. Mark my words. <laughs> I said it. Okay. Now, anise comes from what? Mediterranean plant of the parsley family. Okay. Used in cooking and herbal medicine. Hey. Oh, anise. Dill. Also known as dill. Okay. Hey. I'm, I'm just what? So see that? It looks, it, it says, Dill is also a meaning for a naive or foolish person. So you're going to see the what is a foolish person? One who doesn't believe in the Most High. The Most High is coming for all the people who was doubting, all the people who's on, uh, on the fence, all the people who's blasphemed. Remember, take that same energy. When you had the liberty, you didn't. Now you want to beg? The Most High is not to be mocked. He know exactly why you run into him, because you're scared for your life. You don't love the Most High. These people don't love the Most High. That's why us ministers, we ask hard questions, because we want to know who loves the Most High. You don't think us ministers can tell who's a fake and who's not? <laughs> At least the real ministers of the Most High. You don't think we can tell? Now, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. Why do you think I don't accept people's money? Because when people give money, they think that you will accept them just because of money. But when I don't accept your money, I'm looking for your character. I'm not looking for your money. What good does your money do when we need each other in the body of Christ? Right? It's your character. 
it's your attitude, it's your behavior, it's your enthusiasm, it's your thirst, it's your hunger for righteousness. This ain't about money. <laughs> that, that, you don't even hear what I'm saying. I'm talking too much. <laughs> I'm talking too much. Okay. Now, let me, let me move on to this one, but I'm going to share something with you. just a little frustrated all right now let's go back to wormwood real quick and then let's go to hemlock okay i'm trying to look for one specific thing all right galt Check this out. And then you see poison, right? So I want, want you to remember this, right? So if they share it, no, they won't share it. So we'll look for it here. Galt. What is galt? To castrate. <laughs> wait, no. Wait, wait, but let's see. Oh, did they take it? Oh, I'm upset. One moment. Let me try, brothers and sisters, and look for this properly because I had it before. I had it. I tell you. Hmm. Let's see. Hey, really? Let me see. Try it again. Because it let me get on before. I don't know why it didn't. That's why I highlighted it. See, gold. Here we go. So, Galt, when I look up in this dictionary, not in no city, but the definition, a white crystalline substance that gives seawater its characteristic taste and is used for seasoning or preserving food. So now the most high is saying what? Also, am I going to come for all your preserved food? So even if you have preserved food preppers and you're not of the most high, I'm gonna give you the plague of spoiling all your food. Isn't that just like uh, the plague of Egypt? All the food turned bad. Wow. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> no wonder why people are gonna kill each other. Because the most high is going to tear up their food. Gotcha. <laughs> look what it says. Look, look, watch this, watch this, watch this. It says something that adds freshness. Then it says, um, and ex uh, excuse me, season or preserve with salt. Okay. Sprinkle with salt in order to melt snow or ice, fraudulently make appear to be profitable one by placing rich ore into it. So more so brothers and sisters of salt. Now remember what Christ said. You remember Matthew chapter five, let's skip it real quick. Matthew five. Oh, you don't remember? 95 and 13, ye are the what? The salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. So the most high is coming for all those who were claiming to be something. And he's about to show you who is really nothing because the salt of the earth will help brothers and sisters preserve themselves for Christ. But all the people who you thought 
all the YouTube channels, all the ministers, all the shepherds, all the elders who you and other people out there thought was something and was going to help you preserve yourself for Christ to help you endure to the end. He's about to show you who is of no value. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Man, I tell you, I've been waiting for this moment for a long, long, long time. I've been waiting for the most high to get rid of all the, the wolves in sheep's clothing. Maybe I can help some brothers and sisters who've been steered the wrong way, hopefully, because they ain't listening now. <laughs> All right. Jeremiah 23, verse 9 through. Verse 9 through 33. And I read. Now you can see this is unto the pastors, all right? Shepherds, all those. Okay. Great, great, one of my favorite uh, scriptures here, chapters. Jeremiah 23, mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. Now understand prophets as teachers, ministers, all of these individuals, all right? All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their course is evil and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. So when all this occurs, as it already has, don't be surprised when your leaders are not talking about it. Why? Because they don't know what to do and they do not want to help you. They don't want to help the people. Why talk about something you ain't going to help someone with, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I, they, they need some talking points, right? But, you know, they'll still talk about some stuff, but not everything. <clears throat> They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. I have seen the folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people, Israel, to err. Now, th this is crazy, right? Christ said, you can look at all the signs, but you can't see the signs of the time. This is why I go so hard on people who looking at Balenciaga and all that. Now, Balenciaga comes from the term Baal. Okay, we get it, right? Yeah, yeah. So you got a company that sponsors child pedophilia and, you know, sacrificing, right? So you mean to tell me that you can find terms in the Bible to understand that it's evil, but you can't follow what Christ said. Well, how stupid are you? That's stupid. I'm sorry, it is. Christ said the same thing. Huh? The scribes and Pharisees, you can, you can discern this and that, but you can't discern the time, right? Right, didn't he say that? That's stupid. It's foolishness and it's stupid. Why? How many people are going to go to hell knowing truth about Balenciaga? A lot. Why? Because they don't know the truth about Christ. <laughs> Obviously, Balenciaga can't save you, but Christ can, right? Hello, and they're, now yes, I, I'm all for exposing evil, but to the point like, okay, put it out there twice and let it go as the Bible says. Move on, 
people talk, and even this whole Ohio situation, and I'm going to go into it, but this whole Ohio situation, guess what? Tell the people what it's for and move on. Be, be, because blessed are your ears that hear and listen, and blessed are your eyes that see and understand what I'm trying to share with you. It says, and cause my people Israel to err. Now, what does err mean? It means to go away, to be an error, the spirit of error. If you read the Dead Sea Scrolls, there's two spirits. If you read the book of John, there's two spirits. The spirit of err is the spirit to go astray, to deceive, to what? Stray, to uh, what? Distract. What does distract mean? It means to seduce you. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none doeth return from his wickedness. So you mean to tell me why these ministers, these elders, these pastors, these prophets, these servants of the Most High, supposedly the Most High is upset with them because they won't return you from your wickedness. My job when you come to me as a minister is not to say, oh, John, you're doing so great. Praise the Most High. No, my job is to say, all right, praise the Most High you hear. What things you got wrong? What are your weaknesses? Let's work on them together because in the kingdom of heaven, there are no weaknesses and I'm going to help you as a minister. That's my job. That's our job. It's not to say, oh, well, praise the most high you and the truth. Uh, we have a position for a reason. We have a position for a reason. We have a position for a reason. So understand. It says, they are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Now, man, if you didn't read the book of Jasher, you understand. When it was time to help the righteous or the poor and needy, the Sodomites didn't. It's not just unnatural affection. It's them not being righteous towards their brothers and sisters as well, even the poor. So look at it, right? You got churches that will help out some people, but not all, right? That's an that's a action of Sodom. <laughs> that's an action of Sodom. When, when, when you got ministers and pastors and elders who are helping single women, but not helping the widows or the women who have fatherless children, that's Sodom and Gomorrah because they're helping for a reason. They're not helping because they appreciate that single sister. They're not helping because they want to save that sister. They're helping with evil intentions. Prove me wrong because the first line of 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 help should go to those of families and the elderly, right? And the pregnant woman, right? Not a single person. Right? Hey, maybe I'm maybe I'm just crazy. Whatever. Verse 15. <laughs> Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into the land. Yes, 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 yes. I'm excited. Yes. And you know what? Brothers and sisters, when you see these church ministers and pastors, when you see these congregation elders and bad things start happening to them and bad things start happening, and, and by the droves in their congregations, understand that the Most High said, I am coming for you, you 
false pastors, you false teachers, I am happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Most high, tear them up. <laughs> tear them up. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They make you vain. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Did you hear what the Most High said? They speak a vision of their own heart. Let, let's see what that word vision means. They speak a revelation. They, 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 they speak a revelation, right? They, they, they prophesy of their own to perceive, to perceive, okay? Now, Revelation, their own inspiration. Now, brothers and sisters, even my congregants in person, tell me once when I have preached to you of something of my own will. I will wait and my life will be indebted to you. <laughs> That's a promise that you couldn't name once. You can't even name point, point of anything because everything I'm sitting here telling brothers and sisters is literally warning you to endure to the end, which is exactly what Christ said. You wanna uh, sum up my ministry? Well, that minister, he is teaching under the realms of Christ in the gospel. And someone may say, well, what part, brother, what part, sister? Well, Christ had endured to the end. And so this minister is teaching us what we may, must do and what to avoid to endure until the end. Because a dead congregant is not a useful congregant, <laughs> right? A vain congregant is a dead congregant. Remember that. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said ye shall have peace and they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart no evil shall come upon you now me i i, I was telling my congregants you know I'm, I'm i'm like nehemiah i will fight you <laughs> I, I okay all jokes aside i will fight you if you come into my congregation and start talking craziness against the most high we we will go we will we will we will put some hands that's how serious I go for the most high. And hey, in a nice way, if you say, hey, minister, you know, could you could you just tell me if I'm I'm staring in the right direction? I got no problem with that because at least you're coming humbly, right? At least you're like trying to correct your thoughts and see if your thoughts are correct with the most high. That's righteousness. That's righteous. Why are you saying, oh, we should do this and do this and do this and impose and impose and impose? Hold on now. Hold on. And, and, and you know what? I know this has been my, my thing for, for and, I, and I've prayed to the Most High for years. When the time comes, when other congregants come from different, uh, you know, congregations, right? And, and they see that their, their leaders were false and all that stuff. I'm going to need, I said, Most High, please help me because I'm going to need them to drop everything that they learn from those false teachers at the door. I don't want to hear that trash. I'm just be honest with you because a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Once a drop of it is wrong, the whole thing is wrong, right? It, am, I, am I lying? These are the words that Christ said. The eye, if the eye is dark, the whole body is dark. That means how you view things is dark and wrong. Guess what? The whole body is dark. Now watch this, watch this. Take this into the body of Christ. If the eye, which is supposed to be the leader, is dark, all the congregants 
in the body is dark too, which you got to leave that at the door. You know nothing. All you know is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and leave it at that. Simple. But hey, if you come out and then, you know, learn from your mistakes and then come, hey, I'm all for it. I love it, right? We can chat it up, talk about this, talk about that. We can, we can chat it up. But people imposing, you know, different things. There, there used to be people who send me emails, right? And I'm like, why are you telling me this when you are emailing me about my congregation but yet you belong to another church. If you were so loving of your church, why aren't you with them? Why are you emailing me? Does that make any sense? It doesn't make any sense, does it? So obviously you, you emailed me and I came with peace and love. And then you're talking about different things about, oh, well, if this is this and this is, well, well. I need you to check yourself out the door. This is what the most high talking about. We we're not allowing you here in my ministry to just walk off on your own thoughts. The Bible tells us one faith, one mind, one body, one spirit. There are no individuals. There's no, oh well, I came from this and I cut that. Cut that trash and, and and throw it away. This is what the Most High talking about. All these false pastors letting everyone come in their congregations and their churches with different thoughts, and there's no structure as how the apostles said it and how Paul had structured it in the Book of Corinthians as the body of Christ, and everyone think they something. That, that that's that's disorderly, and we know the author of confusion is not the most high it is lucifer satan so so the most high is is upset with these leaders for not having organization and not standing firm in righteousness telling people oh the most high got you you shall have you shall have peace oh god's got you oh this is your time and i feel this if you don't shut up, that is the stupidest thing ever. Yeah, it's stupid because once you're in the body of Christ, the Most High loves you. I don't need to sit there and tell individuals that God's got you. You should already know without hearing someone else say it. Right? That's just a worldly term. Because you're in the body of Christ, the Most High is hugging you. He's got his hand over you. He's the buckler. He lifts you up. He gives you shade. He lies you down in green pastures. I don't need the mo I don't need you to tell me God's got me. Scriptures already do that. His signs already do that. He woke me up today. He already showed me. Right? So enough with all that. <laughs> enough with all that. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and have perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Y'all know I always bring this out. That whirlwind. Okay. Let's see. See if I can find it properly. Well, I didn't save it in there. But the whirlwind is referring to the Holy Spirit who is going out and evaluating everything and telling the most high, hey, judgment is coming. A grievous whirlwind. Why? Because it says not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Moving forward, the anger of the Lord shall not return until he have ex executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the later days, in the later days, in the later days, you shall consider it perfectly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. This is the later days. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from their evil doing. So the point of the men of the most high is to tell you that you're wrong. You don't come into the congregations of the most high and we tell you that you're doing good. Our job is to tell you that you're doing wrong. Because if, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> if you weren't doing wrong, why would Christ have to die? We'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait, right? Right? So don't get offended when us ministers are always on top of your behind. Because a good and righteous minister of the Most High is when we got our foot on your neck, put it for righteousness. Because we love you. I love you. Even if you don't listen to me, I love you. Even if you do, I love you. I still want you to get to the kingdom because I want to get to the kingdom and I want to see you in the kingdom. I want the most high to say, well, hey, minister, look at this. Look at this one. This is the one you reached out to in Indonesia. This is the one you reached out to in, in India. Or, 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 or what about Iraq? Look, they, they, they was going along in subtitles. They tried their best, but they got the message. I would be crying in tears because it's like I impacted someone I never met, but yet they took the message and understood that I was speaking with Christ. That, there's nothing more special than that to me. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophets said that prophesy lies in my name, saying I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. And then I don't even get to the name, but hey, if you watch my previous lessons, you know I do some extensive studying. I share with you. And if you don't want to accept hey, any name that connects to Baal, which is my Lord, okay? That's why Christ said we shall call him Ishi in the time. But we use the term for now. Okay? But we know what Christ's name is. We know what the Most High's name is. We know what the Holy Spirit's name is. And the Holy Spirit's name is not Kadesh Rawak. Kadesh means holy. Rawak is a spirit. Okay? That's a title. Hey, even even the the we got some some uh, Muslim brothers and sisters who watched trying to get into the faith. Understand, brothers and sisters, that the name Allah just means God in Aramaic. It means in Aramaic. It's it's a title, but that title you have placed it to Islam, which means we cannot use that. Name. Right? Because when we hear this term, we think automatically of what? You see? So that name has been given to a false religion. But yes, that's a title, but that's not the name. Okay? For example, if you go and say, who's the owner of this car? Say him. Well, who's him? Him, he has a name, right? Or she, her, she has a name, right? What's the name, right? Same thing applies. The prophet hath had half a dream, let him tell a dream. 
and he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. Yeah, you know what? I wasn't gonna say this, but those those uh, congregants and those those individuals who take my lessons, and I I don't have many people right who listen, right? You know, but I know who you are, <laughs> who take my lessons and say it for yourself. This is what the Most High is talking about: that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. You are a deceiver because you are using my lessons and you are taking advantage of your people and you're making them think that the most high is giving you knowledge when you are taking my knowledge. Well, I got something to share to you because there are ones out there, there's quite a few. It's been made to made aware to me guess what you're leading your people into hell you are, you're already in hell you just don't see it but the most high is coming for you and you take advantage because no one listens to me what about 10 10 15 people and you think that's okay yeah, the most high, yeah, the most high, he 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 gonna get you. And then they and then the, the same people they sent, they sent what well, 30 plus congregants to act like they, they want to come into my congregation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. You're Judas, and so are your congregants. Moving forward. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord that use their tongues and say, he saith. Yeah, and, and you know what? Let me, let me give an example. Oh, you, you individuals, individuals, <laughs> you individuals, okay, who, who I, I see so much emphasis on the language of the Hebrew, right? Oh, we gotta learn. We gotta learn the language of the Most High and the Hebrew and this and that. Now, it says here in Zephaniah 3, for then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Let's see, let's see, let's see, watch, watch, watch. To change, overturn and return. So you don't have to learn Hebrew because just as he changed the tongues in Babylon, we will all speak the same language again. You demon, you devil, you liar. When you're charging people for Hebrew, you're telling people well, you gotta learn Hebrew, before you learn the Bible, you demon. The most high, it, it, oh, man, I'm getting angry. Why am I getting angry? Because a lot of these brothers and sisters out here, they're going to receive wormwood because they're following these false pastors. They're following these despisers of good. They're, they're following the Judases. They're following the scribes, they're following the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. This is what they're following. And they're following because what? They know the scripture in Hosea where the Most High says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So what you do is you fill them with so much things of your own will that you distract them from reading the entire Bible and then you tell them and pervert the scripture 
that they need to learn something. You charge them for it. And by time the end comes, they know nothing about their talents. They know nothing about their fruits and they know nothing about their purpose for the will of the most high. You devil. You devil. I can sniff demons a mile away. You devil. <laughs> Man. Man. And say, he saith. Yeah, I will fight you too. But that, 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 you know what? Praise the most high. I don't have to because Christ got something worse for you. It's him who has given you and your congregation. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Let's see. Oops. Watch this. I want to share this. Right? Proverbs, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. I am trying to bring brothers and sisters into the congregation of life and peace. And you and all others like them are remaining in the congregations of death. And guess what? They will, they will receive gall and wormwood with those whom they love. Remember that. <laughs> Remember. <clears throat> but they prophesy. But they prophesy, right? It says, verse 32, Behold, I am against him that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. By his lightness, there you go. Unsteadiness, inconstancy, trifling considerations, wantonness, unchastity, Lewdness. Yeah, there you go. Yet I sent them not nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit this people at all. Congregation of the dead. No prophet, saith the Lord. No prophet, saith the Lord. Now, <clears throat> there are some people who tell me, man, you know, your lesson is convicting. I want you to understand this. And remember, whenever whenever you hear a minister who is convicting you, remember Jeremiah 23 and 29. Is not my word like fire? So when you hear the true words of the Most High, you start to sweat. You start to get nervous. You start to feel different. It, it starts to make you feel another way. That's what the word when you're getting it from a man of the most high, that's what it does. It's supposed to, to make you feel nervous, unless we're talking about the kingdom, right? It says, like a hammer that breaketh in rock, the rock in pieces, I will shatter anything that's against the most high. And we will use it as a double-edged sword. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It means I will cut you. <laughs> this word will, will break you down into pieces if you are not strong. And that's okay. 
because what is our father known for? He is a potter and we are the clay. He puts a little water to us, right? As clay. He's, you know, imagine him stepping on the wheel, right? And the wheel is spinning and his, his beautiful, soft, loving hands just molding and shaping us the way he wants, putting the designs in us, right? Just, just carefully shaping us to how he wants us to be. That's the most high. That's the most high. A lot of times it hurts. A lot of times it hurts. But that's okay. Because this is tough love. I love you. Okay. Most high loves you. Christ loves you. Holy Spirit loves you. But he who cannot receive correction. Remember it says the most high corrects those whom he loves. If you can't receive correction. How can you be loved by a father of correction, right? All right. Now the scripture y'all been waiting for. The wormwood. I told you the pastors is going to get it. All the congregants who don't come out of those churches, those congregations, they're going to get it. The circumcised and the uncircumcised is going to get it. Why? There's something wrong with them. Maybe they were not doing what they're supposed to do. Maybe they were just taking the Most High's words for naught. Maybe they were putting off Christ, saying, well, you know, I'll get to it. So, yeah, circumcised, the baptized in heart, changed in mind. Yeah, I love Christ. And, and, don't don't even make me get on this revival. Like I said, that revival, if they ain't telling brothers and sisters, and I can assure you that 10 times out of 10, they're going to be talking about, um, <clears throat> they're going to be talking about uh, 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 a rapture. And I'm like, can you please just read the gospel of Christ? Please. But they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. Giving people false hope. So that that revival, if it don't bring people properly to Christ and prepare them, they speaking of their own imagination. Just like the Mosai said, right? He said, I never told you to speak. Why are you speaking? Right? I remember before I came a minister, I would be like, I'd tell my wife, hey, you know, I'm scared. I I, I want to make sure that the Most High wants me to do this. Remember? He just said, Most High, I, I don't want to speak and, and fulfill this prophecy of, of being a false pastor. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to gain all the knowledge I can and wait. And with lots of fasting and prayer, brothers and sisters, he did reveal to me that I'm happy. Because here we are today. Amen. All right. Let's get to it right now. Revelations. Oh, but. Revelations chapter eight. Here we go. Ten. <clears throat> through thirteen. Now, here we go. I, I need you to pay Close attention to this, okay? Close attention. You ready, brothers and sisters? All right, let's do this. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters and the name of the star is wormwood is called wormwood and the third part of the waters became wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter okay I hope you're understanding and I'll get to 12 and 13 after 
So, 10 and 11. Third angel. Who's the third angel, brothers and sisters? Anyone know? Anyone know? I'll show you. So, first we have to identify a few words. Fell. Let's look at this word, fell. This word means to what? Alighting to fall, okay? So I want you to put the root word alight, okay? Alight. Now, hold on to your seats. So, here we go, most high. May they receive it. Alight. The word alight means to descend. Okay. Follow me, follow me, follow me. To descend, dismount, alight originally to lighten, take off, take away. Okay. A is down a side and get off, make light. The notion of getting down off of a horse or vehicle, thus lightening of it, of aircraft originally balloons from 1786. Now, wait, 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 wait. So, they used to put a light and say it was on fire, okay, to light up, set light to, Okay, and then of the aircraft originally balloons. Is that why we keep saying things about balloons in the sky? In Babylon? No, 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 no. no. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm wrong. I don't know. But they seem to be making an emphasis about this, right? Or, I mean, all right, all right. You know what? Let's let's move on. So check that out, right? Something fell. It was alighted, right? Let's go back to it real quick. And you can see all the other words. To descend from a higher place to a lower place. To fall. To be thrust down. Okay, okay, okay. To fall. Now, a light means to get down or descend, okay? To fall, to descend. So, obviously, there is an angel. There fell a great star. Now, let's look at this word, star. Now, it says, a star as strewn over the sky. Star. Now, here it says a day star, and it got different things like Venus. Okay, Venus is the morning. Okay, how many people knew that? So let's check out Venus real quick. You're like, well, what, where, where are we going here? Where are we going here? Venus is what? The goddess of beauty and love, especially sensual love. From Venus, love, sexual desire, loveliness, beauty, charm, a beloved object. Okay. And you're, you're wondering, like, where is this going? Now, notice this is the root word. It wasn't Venus. It was weenus. That's why you see when. And when means to desire, to strive for. Now, look at this. Now, it came into terms with, it forms all or part of vandium, veneer, venerate, veneration, vulnerable, veneral, venerary, which means pursuit of sexual pleasure. And then venerary, hunting the sport of chase, venial. Venison, venom, Venice, 
Ween, ween, wend, win, winsome, wish, won't, wine. Okay, all of these were referring to the hunt, hunting something. And you see the word Venus. Now look at the word venom. Okay, venom is poison secreted by animals and transfer biting. Now, a poison. Now, what is wormwood? Venom means what? Bitter. So venom is a part of wormwood. Okay. So this has now become what? A chase or a sport to chase someone. Who would it be? The righteous. But Satan doesn't care. Or this angel who decided to pose and fall to the earth. They do not care. Okay. So let's 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 go a little bit further. Okay. Star. Now, my oh my, there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. Now, what burns when it falls? Wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Oh, wait, that's right, meteorites, right? Okay, let's see, let's see if I'm on something. see let's see if i'm on to something watch this watch this okay you ready meteorite is a rock or metallic mass of extraterrestrial origin that falls to earth after striking across the sky sky as a meteor look at the word meteor an atmospheric phenomenon Meteorum in Latin, Greek, meteoria, the celestial phenomenon, things in heaven above. Meteors are fallen angels. They're disguised as fallen angels. Every, why do you think you've never seen one? They're going to show you a picture of a crummy rock. Seriously? Seriously, you mean to tell me this thing was on fire? Why it's not burnt? Why? Apparently, according to you, that when things you see in all the movies, everything burns. How come it don't drop in the ocean? How come it always drop on land? Right? With that much heat coming down, wouldn't it be burnt up? It says, plural of meteoron, thing high up. High up. Raised from the ground, hanging from meta, meta, metaverse, meta, by means lifted up, suspended, hovering in air. You see, that's the root word for meta, meta, fallen, 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 metaverse, verse of the fallen. Never mind, never mind. Look, look, meta means after, behind, among, between, change, altered. You're changing. Look, 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 look. Change of place and condition. You are going to change. Look what it says. Specific sense of fireball in the sky, shooting star, attested to the 1590s. So... Well, let's just say it with me. A meteor is a fallen angel. Okay, rock or metallic mass of. Now, when they say extraterrestrial, do you know what that means? Here. When they say extraterrestrial, this is what they refer to. occurring or originating outside of earth now look at terrestrial 
terrestrial means earthly, of the earth. Originally opposed to celestial. Let's look at celestial now. Okay, you ready? You ready? Watch this one. Pertaining to the sky or the visible heavens. Old French celestial was celestial heaven, sky blue. What do we see in there? Oh, wow. Heavenly, pertaining to the sky, heaven, sky, abode of the gods, which would more so be the sons of God and the most high. But this was in the term of paganism. We don't do that, obviously. So when you see and things fall from sky, it is actually fallen angels coming to bring judgment. So, as it were burning, look at this, look at this one. As it were burning as a lamp. Now it was set on fire and kindled. And don't think they went to the moon. Don't, 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 don't play with me. <laughs> don't, don't, that's a that's a joke in itself. Why? There's a firmament. They can only go so far. You mean to tell me Nimrod went and built a tower? the most high destroyed them. You think they're gonna really make a spaceship and go somewhere? <laughs> Come on. The lamp, next word. Flambe. I said, what? Flambe, a light or luminary. Someone like a candle, right? Watch this, here we go. Okay, I know you, you're doing speculation. Wow, this is crazy. Flambe. A flame, a blazing fire. To shine, flash, and burn. Now you see Bayel. Isn't that crazy? Flambe comes with this word. Baal, okay, as to shining white, as to, now look what it says, bright flame or fire. Now, flambe is right there. It says, shines to burn, a flame, lightning, to shine, flash, burn, glaze, glow, white, pale, No, you don't get it yet? Okay. Here we go. Isaiah 14. Watch this. Isaiah 14 and 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For though hast thou said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. Watch this one. Excuse me, excuse me.
yes, probably. Now, watch this. Isaiah, oh, excuse me. Isaiah 13. No, no, I'm not going to go into this one just yet. You know, this is for the next one, so I apologize. So let's go back to late 13. Or eight, excuse me. Apologize about that. All right. Now, the balloon, the meteorite. Let me see. I think I almost, did I, did I get it right? I think I'm missing maybe one. Okay, so the balloon, right? I shared the balloon and think about this, right? How crazy, and it sounds crazy, right? You got a balloon to travel from one part of upper Western Canada, Alaska and Russia, right? All the way to Alaska, all the way over Montana, all the way over the mid-America, all the way to the Carolinas. And you didn't get rid of it? But you only got rid of it where people could not find or see what it was. Nah, that don't sound right. Right? Does it sound right? Because, and now all of a sudden they talk about UFOs. Brothers, this is now, I know y'all heard of Project Bluebeam. And I understand all their plans. I, I, I get it. And there are some people who believe that UFOs are the chariots of God and All I'm going to say is beware, <laughs> beware, because it tells, it tells us that Christ coming back on horses, right? Coming back with horses and angels, right? I don't know where they get this. Hey, whatever, whatever, hey, you know, but, and think of this, right? <clears throat> Why would a UFO be shot down if it was of the most high? If it was of the most high for heavenly angels, why would it be shot down? It wouldn't. You know, the most high would have came and destroyed this place of Babylon in any other country. I think there's some in England, there's some in Canada, there's some all over uh, Peru. There's, there's all over. He would have destroyed that place. Now, in the respects of what Christ said in this gospel, a family divided cannot stand. So if the powers that are in control are working aligned with Satan, why would they shoot something down, right? That is a part of their plan. Or why would they let you know what they were doing? So, yeah, you know, that, 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 that whole stuff is, is hearsay, okay, as far as, UFOs, but I will tell you this. 
what we can pinpoint is that those meteorites are fallen angels. That balloon is a representation. Isn't it strange, right? The balloon and then, you know, Ohio, right? Now, watch this, right? It says, a burning lamp as it fell upon the third part of the rivers. Now, they shot this down in the water, yes? And it says, the fountains of water. So let's look at this word, rivers. Now, it means drinkable water. So anything that you can use a drinkable water, you may want to stock up if you live in Babylon or if you live in a, the surrounding places. Because look what it says, running water, that's also your shower water. Oh, will baby wipes go out? Running water, brook water, drinkable water, floods, rivers, streams. That's what it says, right? And then the waters, the fountains. Okay, look at this, as if raining. So guess what? Understand that the rain will not be the same ever again. Oh, yeah. And then the fountains of water. Look, 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 a fount, a source of supply. Okay. Necessarily the original spring. Now, when it says source of supply, I'm thinking of what? Even when you go to stores. Because the source is where they get the water. The supply is where the demand comes, right? Supply and demand. You supply what's demanded, what people want, right? So this is not just, brothers and sisters, where the water is gotten. This is also in stores as well. Now, it's so strange because when we type in the word that they seem to be making a big deal about, Ohio, what does Ohio mean? It means good river. And the Most High said he's coming, that angel is coming for the river and waters. So if I didn't know any better, I would say this is a sign to say that your time of fresh water is up. I'm giving you the goal. I'm giving you the wormwood enough. Fair to say, right? I sort of think so, right? Now, uh, let's just do a little bit more. Now, when I type in star in here, I know I, I maybe missed a few things, right? Look at this word star. Star goes to regular star here. And then the influence of planets of zodiac on human affairs, that's your horoscopes, okay? Now, what will we call these things that's happening in the world? You'd call them disaster, right? And a disaster is anything that befalls of ruinous or distressing nature. An unfortunate event, watch this, watch this. A sudden or great misfortune, watch this. Ill starred, watch this. Dis astro means star and planet, okay? The sense is astrological of a calamity blamed on an unfavorable position. What, what, what? The sense of an astrological is astrological of a calamity, of a calamity, of a calamity blamed on an unfavorable position of a planet and a star. So the disasters are coming from the great stars that were thrown out of heaven. You get it now? 
Welcome, brothers and sisters, to the Book of Revelation. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. Welcome. Yeah, that's how I know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you. Now, they did mention misfortune. Let's check out this word, misfortune. Misfortune is unfortunate or event or circumstance. Miss means bad or wrong and fortune as adversity or ill fortune for which the sufferer is not directly responsible. Wait, you're not responsible for an oil spill or nitric acid just going in the air, right? These would be unfortunate events. So the Most High is saying, if you don't get back with me, I created you and now I'm calling you back one last time for the lights go out. <laughs> Before the lights go out, you better get your hide back to me because what you think is an accident or an unfortunate event, demons are creating these things for you to suffer even though you had no direct responsibility for it happening. Isn't that what's happening? Your chicken farms, it was the baby formula first and all that stuff, right? You see all this? And you thought the spirits wasn't here in the world. No, the spirits are the one causing all this. I hope y'all understand it. I hope y'all taking this seriously. Look at this, a euphemism for an illegitimate child. Who's an illegitimate child? The one who was thrown from heaven and goes down to earth and will be cast into utter darkness forever. Satan and all those who joined him, right? Because before they fell, they were called the sons of God, right? They were called the children of the most high. So guess what? Everything points to the fallen, right? You guys are understanding. You guys are smart. That's all I'm gonna say. Y'all are smart. Now, <clears throat> just a little bit more. Let's go back to that word star. There was something specifically and it's so crazy. Everything is like based on stars in this world, right? Oh, look at the stars, the celebrities dancing with the stars. And oh man, it's like you dancing with the what? Fallen. <laughs> you watching the fallen, right? You 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 sing their songs, right? All these people are falling. You're singing, which is worship, right? Because how dare you say it's not worship because when we sing to the Most High, it's worship, right? So when you're singing a song, you are worshiping, right? And so these are not people. These are stars and stars are illegitimate children from the Most High and the illegitimate children are the fallen. You get it? Okay. How are they illegitimate? They're the children of the fallen. Remember? Genesis? Fallen? Sleep with the women, right? Every woman wants what? Six foot man? Six figure man? Six, you know, six parts in their six, six inch members? Six, six, six? Where do you think they get this from? The fallen! Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, look what it says, to perform the lead part, actors, singers, etc. I mean, it literally tells you that, but hey, whatever. Now, moving forward, star, 
Proto-Indo-European root meaning star is stir. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Buck or others doubt the old suggestion that is borrowing from the Akkadian Istar. Istar, which is Venus. Okay, you, you get it. Balto Slavic word for star, right? Now, let's see. Let's look. So we see disastar. Okay, we see star. We see astar. Let's look at astar. Okay, astar in Latin means star. Okay, and once again, Istar goes to Venus. Let's let's check this word out. Istar, Istar, Istar. What better yet? Let's go to Venus. And then goes back to what? Love, sexual, all these things of the flesh, right? And it says it was applied in English to any beautiful and attractive women, woman by the 1570s. Now, if I were the sisters out there, and someone said this or someone even labeled me after lucifer because venus is also a term for lucifer i would be furious now i mean i mean they put it out there isn't isn't it like the woman shaving named venus right yeah, yeah. i mean they can put it out there. So remember this, while Satan was after the women, he was looking to, what? And, and because the women didn't want the natural men, the fallen was like, well, let's just change the men into women, right? That's where we get this experiment. Right? So why you want the 666? He's a genetic male. You also don't mind them. You also don't mind your, your best gay friends, right? Back in the day, they loved the gay best friends. Oh, he's not bothering nobody, right? Oh, it's okay. I need a shopping partner. I need, I need someone who don't look at me like that. So you're okay with no men because you are not coming against I repeat you are not coming against them turning males into females boys into drags right you're, you're okay with that you're okay with abortion you're okay with OnlyFans. You're okay with being a stripper. You're okay with dressing any kind of way. You're not okay with submitting to the men of the most high. You're not okay with submitting to God, but you're okay with them turning men gay. Now, I have a question, right? If they were having the ability to turn men gay, wouldn't it mean that they also have the ability to make women more emotional? Which means if you are an emotional female uh, more than normal, wouldn't that mean that that's not how the Most High made women to be so emotional? Maybe some emotional, but not so emotional. Now you go. 
and, and, and for my single sisters out there, I'm sorry for you. But when you, when you go and think how there's no good men available, just remember that they're turning the men gay. This is a war. They wanted the, they wanted the only fans. They wanted the gay best friends. Now it's ran rampant, like the gay, the gay, uh, 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 <clears throat> the gay, the gay musicians, the gay athletes. It's like a badge of honor. I mean, think about this, right? I was a vet, a vet, an army vet. It's more, it's more of a privilege in Babylon to be gay than an army vet. Think about that. Right, right, right. Watch this, watch this. I'm going to show you. A combat vet or a military vet may get the GI Bill for a few years. Well, in San Francisco and certain states, there's LGBT sanctuaries where the city has to give you a job and you have to receive universal basic income because you're gay. But yet you have homeless people who fought in wars, sleeping under bridges. You have, you know, the worst system at the VA where they just don't give a dog crap about veterans. Good grief. And and they get nothing. I mean, man, it, it's it's crazy. And you know what? I'm sorry, but I believe, yes, the men of the most high, we are doing the work spiritually, but it really needs to be the women who stand up to this front of sodomy, LGBT, because it's the women who started this. The, the sodomy, the LGBT, don't no man, don't no father say, when I have a son, I want him to be a drag. Are you serious? No. You got, you got mothers putting makeup on their sons and then wonder why they can't get a man. Look at you, you are a disaster walking. This is a disaster. You, you, Babylon, and, and you know what? I've said it before, I'll say it again. That whole passport thing, passport bros and, and the OnlyFans, the women doing it to themselves in Babylon. And I'm talking about the unrighteous, which is most of them. There's not a lot of righteous ones out there, but tip my hat off to you who are staying firm and strong with the gospel and staying in Christ. But for the others, Come on, you know, and like I said, it got to be the women who sit here and say, the most high say he'll put enmity between us and the most high and his seed. And then Satan and the fallen angels came and fell for us. And then at the same time, now we're seeing that this is the days of Noah. So if this was the days of Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah, happen because the fallen angels were able to teach people how to turn men gay and how to turn men into women which means where are our sisters standing up i'm not just talking about if you got a child i'm talking about even if you're single like come on hey but this is why these waters is getting tainted because no one want to do what the most high said no one want to appreciate the most high no one want to come to the most high in righteousness everyone want to do their own thing
Now, <clears throat> yeah, I had some more videos, right? Check this out. Water samples. Check this out. Be carefully packed as soon as deep in the creek watershed. Uh, this is Ohio. In regards to these Palestine good river. This sample I'm looking at today is from By Road. This is probably within about two to three miles of the train crash. This is the closest water that I was able to gather outside of the containment zone. Here on the right side, we have Little Beaver Creek. This is upstream from Beaver Creek before North Fork joins in. So this will be my clean sample of what our water should be. If you take a look at these two containers side by side, you can already see that the one on the left here is not only misty, it has almost the appearance of like a chilled alcohol versus this one on the right that you can see entirely through. It just looks like standard water in plastic. We already have some strips done, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you two more. I wanna record this in a continuous video so that there is no question of that. This is a new strip picked at random. Dirty water. We're going to put it in the contaminated water, shake it to make sure that we get all the air bubbles out. This strip will go on the left side with the rest of the contaminated strips. The nice thing is, is that those ones have been cooking, so we had plenty of time to wait to see the results. This is clean water from Beaver Creek. This is what should be on our waterway. This is what our fish should be swimming in. Save us. So now if you look at all of my results here, on the left side, we have the contaminated water in which you can see it is bleaching all the color out of these squares. You can see it's making it darker. Now watch, watch what he pulls up. Not so much actually changing what color they are versus the right side. They look normal, right? How picture perfect these strips look. You can see that there is obviously something in this water in large quantity that is being hidden. Just go back to taking a look at these two containers and you decide. Now that's the water sample. Now, check this out. Here's what some people took. I know y'all probably didn't see this, but share it anyway. Look at this. Look what comes up. Wow. The water oh, started forming. It. It's Chemicals. all on the bottom of the creek bed. Look at that. Don't get too close. But they burned all the chemicals off of it, right? That's what I heard, yeah. <laughs> Maybe off the top. Then, and then, take this one out. This is one worse than the other one. Uh, Look at that. You know, like, what is in that water? That's them saying the news said the water is back to normal. Now, let me pull up a quick map real quick. Bandy bandy map. Okay. And let 
Let me show y'all something here. Okay. Map. Let's see. Let's see. No. Let's see. One moment. One second, one second. Mm -hmm. One minute, one minute. On that thought, just making sure I'm getting the right thing for y'all. Let me see. Don't want to get this wrong. And bear with me, brothers and sisters. Thank you for your patience so much. Give me a second. Oh, I got it. Well, check this out. Originally, this is the Ohio River. Okay, right there. Now, watch this, watch this. Ohio River does. I repeat, it travels all the way. Ohio River flows 981 miles through six states. Okay. Through six states. Okay. Very interesting number, right? Now, Watch this when I when I go back. Okay. And I go into Google. It says the Ohio River flows 981 miles through six states from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Cairo, Illinois. The Ohio meets the Mississippi River, eventually connecting to the Gulf of Mexico. Which means, watch this, watch this, watch this. Wait a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold, hold, hold that thought. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So, it goes from the Ohio River. about a little bit under um under cleveland in this region here okay so if it goes all the way to illinois all the way here and then goes all the way down to the mississippi okay 
it will affect everything from Iowa, Milwaukee, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. It'll pretty much, it'll just really taint a lot of things, if not all things on that East Coast and that Southeast Coast. Don't believe me? Hmm. Check this. Someone made this TikTok or whatnot, this video, and said this. Final chloride explosion in Palestine, Ohio, going to the Ohio River, flowing into the Mississippi, emptying into the Gulf of Mexico through New Orleans, and we're already in North Florida Sea and traces of dead animals and stuff wash up on our beaches. Now, North Florida, Pensacola, Panama, which means, oh yeah, Florida gonna get it too. That means Houston gonna get it. And all of this area. You know, it's so strange because we never hear, like when we heard of the BP oil, we never heard about what happened to Mexico, right? As if the water didn't spread out to Mexico, right? It just spread out to New Orleans and, and those places, yeah? But hey, whatever. So what I'm trying to share with you is that good river. Oh, it's going to tear up Babylon. That's what it means, brothers and sisters. It's going to tear up Babylon. Now, here's an example, because then, well, when it said rain, this is what it was referring to. Take a look at these pictures that Stu Peters posted. This is crazy stuff right here. We got the suite. Stu Peters says, Ohio, this is what's happening to cars for driving through spurts of rain 70 plus miles southeast of the East Palestine incident. Now, the pictures will zoom in, so don't worry about squinting. Look at these photos. They're, they're covered in, I don't know, man. It looks like salt almost. Like, look at this, these streets. Yeah, it does What's look like it looks like someone drove their car through like New England right after. Yeah, after, after, after like the salt. But it everything. looks like it looks like the paint even like kind of flaked off or something. Especially here, like what is this? That's weird residue. Yeah, I mean, weird residue. There was no way to avoid res that that cloud was black. There was definitely residue falling back to earth, right? It's just a question mm -hmm. of is this residue toxic? So what you're seeing is rain dried up on um, the vehicle I'm driving. Uh, as you can see, it looks like a little, this is the windshield right here where you can, you know, I, I got that off right there. But as you can see, it's like a powdery substance after it rains. I'll mute that because that's their song. But here, check out check out these up close look at look at what it did to the cars it rusted the cars okay it brought corrosion to the cars or erosion all right and look at that it literally ate the material of the cars light of the headlights i mean <laughs> And eventually his clothes started to be eaten away. So, brothers and sisters, this will, 
I mean, and I say, and don't worry, West Coast, they'll they'll eventually get something that this gonna hit all Babylon. I I tell you, this will hit all Babylon. Okay, some type or some form of poison. Now, if I, I, I repeat this, okay? If the Most High does not want this to touch, per se, Mexico, whatever rivers that run into Mexico, it will not touch. Because, mind you, this almost seems to be a judgment of Babylon. But if the Most High wants it to touch Mexico, you better believe it'll happen in the San Diego area, which I would assume next something would occur. Something did happen in that Tucson area. Something in the New Mexico area. Something here on the border. You have, uh, uh, what, what was this, uh, La Cruces? I think, oh, Albuquerque is there, okay. Albuquerque, La Cruces, there's Tucson, there's Nogales, there's Yuma, there's El Paso, there's uh, Eagle Pass. Uh, there's a few places over here on this border, okay? And I think the, uh, the, the Rio Grande, Grande runs all through. So if the Most High wants Mexico to receive that backlash as well, or that punishment for sin, they're going to get it too. Oh, yeah. Most high is, he's not to be mocked. This is what I said. Okay. This is what I said. This is what the most high said. Okay. Now, let me do a little bit more reading here. I read to you all 10 and 11. Now, I want you to understand Revelations 8, all right, 12 and 13. This is the fourth angel. So understand, we have now been in the, the world has now experienced just the beginning of the third angel, okay? And understand, you understand, brothers and sisters, how time is moving by so fast? This is why those spills and those those train derailments is happening back to back to back to back to back to back remember in the book of ecclesiasticus chapter 33 the most high says in verse 14 and 15 good is set against evil and life against death so understand that the fallen they just were thrown down okay from heaven they understand christ is setting up for war they're setting up okay the most high is setting up christ is setting up so they know their time is coming that's why the days are moving by so fast that's why the accidents the disasters the catastrophes is happening so fast because a day without a catastrophe is a day you get to focus on the most high. Prove me wrong. Because if you're in the catastrophe, you're not gonna think about, oh, what scripture I gotta remember. You're gonna think about how to get out of safety, how to get to safety, right? That's common sense. So their mind, their, the, the demon's ways is to distract you any way possible. And the best way, now the internet, the the tree of good and evil, which is the internet, okay? Now that's not working to, to the fullest extent, and they've done their damage going after the children. They've done their, and, and they're not finished, but they've done their damage, okay? Changing the genders and, and the pronouns and, and, and bringing the abomination of desolation, which is uh, uh, changing the most high into a female, Okay, which is which is including and excluding things from the Bible that shouldn't be. That's why time is moving. That's why that's why you seem like, man, man, okay, 
brothers and sisters, we could sit there and say it's the elite. We could sit there and say it's the, this is prophecy, okay? You have to understand. Stop saying that this is the global elitist. That's and no disrespect to anyone, but that's basic level. That's basic level. We are not playing with flesh and blood, okay? We, we this is not. You have to think George Soros, uh, Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates. These are not normal people, okay? These are not normal people. These are not normal people. Joe Biden, uh, Trump, Obama, Bill Clinton, Hillary. These are not normal people. These are not normal people. Putin, not normal people. All of them, not normal people. Not normal. You want to know how? When I go into the CERN lesson, they have a treaty of why they cannot send people to Antarctica. Now, there's green. The world hasn't been tainted. And watch, I got a, I got a, I got a woman who was on BBC who said she was allowed to go there and said it's the, mu the most beautiful place you've ever been in the world and it's like nothing there has been tainted at all but why won't they let anyone else go it's because they conspire together for evil that's there how many people know that in antarctica from the from the glaciers spews up blood they feeding demons this is a treaty they can't bring people there. There's areas that were portals to go from Antarctica to Europe. Okay, you have to understand this is deeper than these face plates or these, these clones and what they make people to believe. This is deeper. Okay, this is why the time is going by so fast, brothers and sisters, so, so fast. So you have to understand, as more of you brothers and sisters, and brothers and sisters worldwide, waking up, staying strong, sharpening your sword and the Most High in Christ and the Holy Spirit, putting on your armor, the fallen, they are heated. They are upset. And this is the way we prepare for war, by preparing ourselves with knowledge and wisdom and understanding, which is the what? The stability of our time. Salvation is a strength, right? And what gives us salvation? Our patience. That's why Christ said patience possesses the soul. So in all this evil and catastrophe, we still have to be patient for the promises that are for us. Amongst doing other things, helping other brothers and sisters, helping the weak, helping the poor, helping the lame. I'm gonna get into that in a whole different lesson, future. All right, so understand why this is happening so fast. These, these angels, these fallen, they're falling faster. You see these meteorites, they're falling, they're falling, they're falling, they're falling, they're falling, they're falling, they're falling. Now they're not just falling. They falling with information. And we would think, how stupid. Yeah, I said it, Satan. How stupid could you be to fall at this time seeing all the evil? It's because they had it in their heart to fall the entire time. They had it in the heart to fall the entire time. That's what it was. So that's why it says, so is the godly against the sinner. You and I, brothers and sisters, we're against the sinners. We're against the fallen. So when they show out and show up, be ready to fight them. I don't like them. I want you to think of all that pain and then the power that Christ give you, we're going to fight them. 
This is what it says. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another. So what is the Most High doing that they need to distract you with a balloon? They need to distract you with some false UFOs and Project Bluebeam, and then they need to sit there and say, China this <clears throat> and, and China that, meteorites all over the place. <clears throat> What they need to do that for? And then, man, listen. 2023, their 2023, ain't been nothing short of wow. And then March 1st, in a few weeks, they're going to open up their doors for the one world religion? Oh, oh man, I can't wait. I cannot wait because you know the video is going to come in. And guess what? We're going to destroy it. And watch, brothers and sisters, everyone who talks about the new world religion, watch them save it to the beast system in Europe, and they will use that to come against us and say, if anyone believes in these things, they're an enemy of the one world religion. I mean, even look at, look at, <clears throat> look at the new station that I've, that I've shown you guys. A lot of you sit there and think we on. The name of it is the world is one. That's their motto. One world news. Did you miss that? You missed that, didn't you? But I'm paying attention because I'm not thinking carnally minded. I'm thinking spiritually. They've already switched news stations into the world is one. We on W I O N World is One Network. We on. Come on, brothers and sisters. Don't fall asleep on me now. Wake up. Wake up. We're almost at the end. Look upon all the works of the Most High. Two and two, one against another. That's why everything is moving so fast, so fast. Okay. <clears throat> now, watch this. We're going to go into Isaiah 13. This is off of, actually, let's go to Revelation real quick. Let me read that. Revelations 8, okay, and 12. It says the fourth angel. So this would be after the waters, brothers and sisters, and I'm going to give you a little, little sneak peek because once after these waters hit, brothers and sisters, lights out, night, night, that's it. No more internet. This w That will be the, the big one as what they say. Hold on. Let me, let me show you. I got this email, right? I gotta go on my email and I'm gonna show y'all this. I got this email and I was like, so what? I was like, praise the most high. I, I didn't even, I wasn't even looking at this. But they sent this email to me. I told y'all sign up for this. I told y'all, uh, I think a year ago, sign up for this, right? <clears throat> Look at that. My Patriot Supply. This is February 17, 2023. A, cat a catastrophic, a catastrophic, excuse me, cyber attack is coming. How to prepare? And look what they mentioned. A focus at the World Economic Forum 2023 annual meeting in Davos was on cybersecurity. During the annual meeting, the World Economic Forum shared report claims 91% of respondents say they believe a far-reaching and catastrophic cyber event is at least somewhat likely, somewhat likely, you mean they're going to plan for a cyber event in the next two years. Mind you, the year hasn't even started according to the Most High. So they're talking about between 2023 and 2024. Come on. Come on. 
come on. Because before you continue reading, take a second and think about all the devices you use connected to the internet. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm trying the best I can to prepare you. 91%, you stop lying to me and say 100% is going to happen. We know the truth. Because the Bible says, look, look, Revelations 8 and 12. The fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten. What does smitten mean? Flattened out and flick with calamity. Hmm. And the third part of the moon and the part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and night, the night likewise. So guess what? The earth will be darkened. Wherever the wormwood is going to get dark, so, uh, excuse me, wherever the, 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 the wormwood is going to occur, that third part, guess what? It's coming for Babylon too. It's coming. Okay. And it says, and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the mist of heaven saying with a loud voice, woe, woe to the inhabitants of earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So, hmm, man, listen, <laughs> listen. Hey, Bill Gates, what he said he was going to do, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Now, mind you, brothers and sisters, this is why I say you got to be careful for distraction, because the Most High said in the book of Matthew, he said that he's shortening the time lest the powers that be could do what they actually wanted to do. They're not going to be able to do everything. That's why I say be careful and just focus on scripture, because you can see a million things and they're not going to be able to do a million things. They maybe could do a hundred. They won't. Most Man, we all be dead if they did everything they want. That's why. If it connects to the Bible, that's what it's to, for. If it don't connect to the Bible, brothers and sisters, that's it. Just This is hearsay. This is just a distraction, tree of knowledge of good and evil. Confusion. <clears throat> Isaiah 13, 10 through 12 reads, For the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and his going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. And oh my goodness, I will make, I will, I will, I will be making a lesson again, but in more detail on the men of the most high, the men of gold. Why? Because when them lights go out, <laughs> you're going to wish you was following a man of the most high. This is what the most high said. He said, as the lights go out, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. You're going to see who's all in for Christ. And you're going to see the cupcakes, the muffins, the marshmallows, you gonna see the soft ones from the real. Because mind you, why did the Most High say, oh, I will make a man more precious than fine gold? That's the point of being put in the fire. When you ain't got no money, you don't got no electricity, you gotta be on the move when people are gonna come after you, fight you house to house, Come on now. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there thinking of. Uh, 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 I'm like, man, some of these females in Babylon, they're going to suffer if they don't come to the most high. And some of the female, and, and you can't just say the females in Babylon because you got to say the world has drank of that cup, right? And so it, you, you got women in the Middle East doing the same exercises in the gym as the women in Babylon. 
And it's like, uh, you doing hip thrusters ain't gonna save your life. <laughs> you doing squats all day long. Did y'all see the woman in the gym? Not only did the idiot let the man in the gym, which obviously there's no discernment, but all them weights and you couldn't swing a weight at someone? That just shows you that women wasn't, wasn't battle ready. And when she, when she pushed the door open, she walked away, turned her back. That's rule number one. You don't turn your back from a stranger. Rule number two, why would you go and start doing hip thrusters and put yourself in a position where it weights is against you when someone is a stranger around you? Now, if you have to get up, what if that man would have came and choked her from her neck? while she was under those that, that bar for hip thrusting. She would have felt real stupid because what? You're going back to what you was doing. A lustful exercise shouldn't be doing even in public, but she wasn't in public, she was by herself. But you shouldn't even be doing that. And then someone could have came and choked you. That was like mercy from the most high. And she's like, yeah, my parents taught me to never give up. Don't you understand? that's a warning you that man wasn't fighting you he wasn't fighting you come on now you see you see the spirits it's the spirits in these people they the spirit wasn't trying to fight you the spirit was trying to rape that woman not trying to fight you because if he wanted to fight you, y'all seen videos. Y'all heard what the world says, right? And I fear for women, uh, you know, because especially the single sisters out there, you gotta feel, you gotta fear for them in some sense because you know what the worldly saying is amongst the men: equal rights, equal fights. That means you on your own. That's what they say: equal rights, equal fights. You want to be equal to a man? Defend yourself. That's what they say. So while you sitting up there doing hip thrusters, while the females doing hip thrusters, the men saying equal fights, equal right, equal equal rights, equal fights. You you, you ain't gonna butt you know butt someone to death. <laughs> you ain't gonna butt someone to death. <laughs> you ain't gonna butt someone to death. Come on now. Hey. The time is coming, brothers and sisters, and, I, and I'm telling you, I fear for people because a lot of people didn't take this seriously. I may, I may have laughing points here, but all in all, I don't want no one to get hurt. I know what the Most High says to those who don't want to come to the Most High. Hey, they're going to have to see the Most High and Christ in judgment. They're going to have to see what they missed. That's on them. But for us, brothers and sisters, you know, and even for those who are coming to the Most High right now in these times, come on, we got to get this right. We got to get this right. It says in Amos chapter 8, excuse me, 9 and 13, and it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the mourning of an only son. And the end thereof is a bitter day. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a, fa not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins, in that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Hey. Why would you faint for thirst? Because you can't get the knowledge anymore. Famine of the land, which means grid, good night, goodbye. 
forever darkness. And you know why that is? Because the demons need darkness. They need darkness. And boy, when I tell you, it will be Halloween day and night. You better prepare your soul. Darkness all the time. You don't believe me. Okay. There's two places that darkness comes upon the world. It's Alaska, to my knowledge, at least. It's Alaska and it's the so-called Antarctica that has, you know, mostly dark and they get very few days of sunlight. Now go ahead, brothers and sisters, and see how people in Alaska act with no sunlight. And I want you to understand this. Get ready, brothers and sisters, because where there's no sunlight, there's no warmth. And when there's no warmth, it's free. <laughs> it's gonna be freezing. They're taking out the sun. See, no, no one was thinking this deep. No sun, no light. It means I'm cold. So if you are a tropical baby, if you love warm weather, I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a polar bear, but even me being a polar bear, that, that ain't going to do. Trust me. Okay. You're going to need only the most high because, hey, remember this. Your why, brothers and sisters, if you ain't start thinking about it now, when you in the gym, when you doing your exercises at home or when you running, I want you to have a new motivation. I want you to think of your why that entire workout. As you as you doing them push-ups and you got, start to get tired, you hit muscle failure. Think of your why. Why? Why? Think of your why. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Now I'm gonna get back into Revelation. Revelation 14 and 6. Now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be nice here. I love you all. And I want everyone to understand this. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of the water. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, which she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel, <clears throat> Excuse me. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out with, without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of who? Our Savior? Shah. Now, <clears throat> I 
as a prior English professor, as I said, very detailed. I tried to be. Okay. Most High has given me this talent in detail. And I praise him for it. Now, an angel is going to come and preach and also set ministers to preach. Okay. Because one works together with something else. Let's check this out. Angel. Let me sit there and say, hmm. Angel is a messenger. By implication, a pastor and a messenger. What? So this is when Babylon is destroyed. The Most High will send the pastors along with the angels to go and do the work of the Most High. And guess what? It's going to be the main three angels, but the Most High, you will know who's on top of the game because all the, the false prophets and the false, they're going to stop. They, they can't do nothing after that. They can't do nothing after Babylon is fallen. Okay. Now, please pay attention to, it says the angel, another angel came and said, Babylon is fallen and fallen. Now, the third angel came back and said, if any man worship the beast, the image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Now, please understand that I've said this a million times and no one believes me. Babylon will not implement fully the mark of the beast. It clearly says it's fallen, it's gone, it's over. <laughs> okay? Why do people read? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, brothers and sisters, but it says it's fallen first. And then the third angel followed saying, if any man. So the third angel gave a command after Babylon was fallen. So wait, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this. It says in verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God that is poured out. Okay. So how would people be able to understand the wrath of God if Babylon was still standing. Does that make sense? Right? Because Babylon, I'm sorry, America, you will be the example to the world. And everyone who comes into the truth from the Most High, for the Most High, a lot of them will come from the destruction of your nation. You will be the new Sodom and Gomorrah. You, Sodom and Gomorrah will no longer be even mentioned. Did you see what the Most High did to America? I, oh, wow, I, I never would have thought. It was the greatest nation on earth, they said. Mighty military and all. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Moving forward here's the patience so it says what what does that also mean that once babylon falls they will then what did i say they will then implement the mark that's why it says here is the patience of the saints which means we would have to be on but from that point on, they will implement a one world structure. Brothers and sisters, the writing is on the wall. They got the one world religion. You don't think they got a one world order? Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Look what I just saw today. Look what I just saw today. And I saw this on We On. <laughs> World is one. Crazy, right? Watch this. I'm just going to show y'all the title. Okay. 
building your online i'm gonna show you the title yes okay and remember minister Shop told you china iran and russia to create a new world order the very nations that will destroy babylon you, you, you thought I was joking. Look at this. A new alliance. I don't even watch it. I'm just skimming through it. I don't even need to watch it. Because I said this before, didn't I? I said the worlds were siding together, didn't I? You do better listen. I already told you that. <laughs> I already told you. Once again, I hate to say it, but I told you so. I I I I told you so. I told you. Nobody listen. Nobody. Look 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 at the terms they got. Sorcerers apprentices. Come on. Come on. And we know, hey, uh, apprentice is the first uh, first uh, 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 stage of being a mason. Uh, sorcerers, hello, they about to do some craziness. Come on. Come on. We, we not fighting flesh and blood. We're not fighting flesh and blood. It's going to be hard, brothers and sisters. But we can do this. We can do this. Don't get discouraged now. Hmm. I want to get crowned by Christ. I want to stand. I want to see the resurrection. I don't want to be a part of it. No offense. If I have to die, let me be a part of it. But... If I don't have to die and I can make it all the way, I want to kneel before Christ, before judgment. You understand? All right. And then verse 13, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from hence. Fourth, yea, saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. So if we die, we want to die in righteousness. Amen. But if not, I, I want to kneel before Christ before judgment. And I want to get crowned. That, that, that's what I want. I want Christ to say, job well done, you shot. That's what I want him to say. I want him to say the same for y'all. I hope y'all want it for yourself. But the work is hard, brothers and sisters. The work is hard. Revelations 19, showing y'all some gems here. 11. Now, I saw heaven opened. Well, better yet, better yet, better yet, better yet. Before I go there, let me share a video with you. Let me show you this video. This one. All right, brothers and sisters, I thank you for <clears throat> that, uh, that brief pause. All right, let's get back into it. This video right here. In East Palestine, Ohio, um, my home and my business separate buildings are both located within growing distance of the train derailment the water the creek is where most of the smell comes from if you get closer to the creek which runs through town it stinks and it burns your eyes my family and i my wife and two kids we got an airbnb we've been living out of since this happened last friday this is the first time i've been home in a week so i had to leave my two small dogs here they're okay i just have to come feed them we still have a mortgage on this house we were pretty well paid, a lot more than halfway paid off the, you know, that was 
face on the value at times. Like it's worthless now, but hey, I'm just gonna buy it next to a train like I own the less engines. The creeks in here. It's all a work in progress that I can't do. The creeks break my back door, you open it up, there roots, you know, and they got the guys in hazmat suits and respirators still back there cleaning it. So I don't really know what we're gonna do. We don't plan on coming back. It's a nurse, so she's not taking any chances with you know, the chemicals and just because we don't know. You know, the side effects of what was spilled and burned off. We're trying to get, you know, some are more permanent to live one step at a time, I suppose. Now, you'll understand why, <laughs> why I shared this with you at the end. You will. Okay. <clears throat> now, I want to share one more. Check this out. This may take my uh, my video off. No, I will if it does. Check it out. They don't want you to know how important the cargo is to them. They are willing for you to go into conspiracy routes of killing their fish and tainting their water, which indeed seems like the case. But it's because they're hiding more. Because if indeed it is what I believe is, which are components of fentanyl, because one thing people don't tell you is that fentanyl is a fantastic drug to ensure the viability of human organs. And here's the fun fact. Fentanyl. You die and overdose it. Guess what? Your chances of becoming an organ donor have exponentially increased. Most organ donors in America last year were from fentanyl overdoses. And you know what else is happening? In China. China? Is used on prisoners whom they harvest organs from. So they put fentanyl in the prisoners' foods in China to kill them off and then take their organs. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So you have to ask yourself, is this just a drug? Or are we actually actively importing it via a railroad? Because oh. if it is, we're seeing a spike in Massachusetts, already introduced legislation, offer to prisoners a reduced or even canceled sentence. Wait, wait. Massachusetts bill propose, proposes reduce sentences for inmates in exchange for organ donation. Boy, you, 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 that's February 3rd, 2023. You Babylon, you are sick. You are sick, you, you whore of the earth. You whore of Satan, you are sick. If they decide to donate an organ. And there are many more states following suit. I think California should be paying attention. Now, China with the train and then, I, I mean, it, it all just seems really strange to me, right? But then <clears throat> you have Donald Trump Jr. saying that the trail derailments, derailments are because Russia was able to hack the train system and it was a retaliation for destroying the Nord Stream gas pipeline. So we're going to make sure gas goes into your water just like you did us. Wow. Very interesting, huh? Very interesting. Yep, this was yesterday. But shh, you don't know nothing. Donald Trump Jr., Russia's theory about U.S. trained realists. I moved to Colorado after I graduated from the Wharton School of Finance 
to get some stuff out of my system. And I worked at, but that was an amazing conversation with my father, by the way. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, oh, really? what are you doing? You know, it was, it was like, what are you starting to work? It's like, wow, I'm driving out last. So I was cut off. The only thing that they didn't cut off because they forgot was my gas card. So I had a car and a gas card. And so mm -hmm. I'm the guy that like lived off gas station sushi for like a year. So like, you know. <laughs> I've been talking too much about nothing, but <clears throat> the article is there, brothers and sisters. The article is there. And, and why would the U.S. tell you? They lie about everything. They lie about everything. There's not a truthful bone and not, not in, in, in the Babylonian government structure. There's not one truthful bone. But hey, Russia destroys. Hey, they're going to do the train. I guess, I mean, but what they tell you. I mean, it wouldn't be too far fetched, but just something to think about. Maybe we'll hear more, you know, circulating in the days to come. Alrighty. Now, back to our scriptures. Revelation 9, 11 through 21 reads, I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he sat upon him and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doeth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. Wonder who that is. And the armies, the armies which were in heaven followed upon him upon white horses. Wait, wait. <clears throat> wait a second. So all these people keep talking about UFOs. Uh, it clearly says white horses. But never mind. Clothed in fine linen. White and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of a fierceness in wrath of almighty God. <clears throat> and, he so, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Amen. <clears throat> that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Now, this is going to be the focal point. <clears throat> what is all this leading to? The armies of the earth will what be gathered together one world army one world government to fight against christ the one who sat on the horse and his army i'm so happy i'm out of the army because i didn't want to be on the wrong side of that war that's for sure <clears throat> and so now you think of this Think of all the people who decided to stay in the military who actually will survive everything. 
Those are the people who are going to fight against Christ. Boy, I know some people. So happy I distanced myself. <clears throat> and the beast was taken, and with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he decided them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image, these were both cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. <clears throat> and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horses, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all of the fowls were few, filled with their flesh. So Satan went and took people with him who received the mark and who worshiped his image. He took them right into hell with him. He was like, come on, y'all not gonna stay here. I'm gonna take y'all right with me. Man, think about that. That's sad, man. At the end of the day, that's sad, man. Man. Now, the focal point that I'm going to finish with. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. <clears throat> Second Ezra 13. Gonna be a little long. Thirteen verse one through fifty. <clears throat> Excuse me. Reads. And it came to pass after seven days I dreamed a dream by night, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea, that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. Now, who's that man that waxed strong with thousands of heaven? I wonder who. <clears throat> and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice. Like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. And after this, I beheld and lo, and there was gathered together a multitude of men out of a number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue that the man that came out of the sea. <laughs> but I beheld, so once again, I understand that there was gathered together a multitude of those who came from the four winds of heaven. That means the four corners of the earth, the worldwide government to come against this man. <clears throat> but I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. But I would have seen the region or place whereout the hill was graven and I could not. And after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet durst fight. They were afraid. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests and they were all mixed together the blast of fire the flaming breath and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight prepared to fight they were prepared to fight and burn them up everyone so that upon a sudden of an, an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. 
So watch this. <clears throat> if you know someone in the army right now in the military, you best tell them get out. Because Christ going to, what? Christ is going to eradicate them and turn them to dust. Man, that's not a way I would want to go out. If I had to die, I want to die for righteousness. I don't want to die going against Christ. <laughs> that's, that's the dumbest thing you can do. <clears throat> Afterward, saw I the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him another peaceable multitude. Now, this is a peaceable multitude. The other one wasn't so peaceable. And there came much people unto him, whereof some were glad, some were sorry. And some of them were bound, and other some brought of them that were offered. Then I was sick, through great fear, and awake, and said, Thou hast showed me thy servants, thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning. And has counted me worthy that thou shouldest receive my prayer. Show me now yet the interpretation of this dream. For as I conceive in my understanding, woe unto them that shall be left in those days, and much more woe unto them that are not left behind. For they that were not left were in heaviness. So here's the left behind doctor now. Woe unto those that were left, but more woes who were not left behind. Now understand I the things that are laid up in the later days, that's now, which shall happen unto them and to those that are left behind. Therefore are they come into great perils and many necessities which means what brothers and sisters we are about to go without our needs remember when you survive this brothers and sisters remember your why why you're doing it because if not you're going to be just like the children of israel when they came out of egypt and you're going to be complaining. And yet the most high is saving you. You're going to be complaining. I don't think that's a good idea. It says like as these dreams declare. Yet it is easier of him that is in danger to come into these things. Than to pass away as a cloud out of the world. And not to see the things that happen in the last days. And he answered unto me and said. The interpretation of the vision shall I show thee, and I will open unto thee the thing that thou hast required. Whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind, this is the interpretation. He that shall endure the per peril in that time hath kept himself, hath kept himself, hath kept himself, that they may be, they that be fallen into danger, they that be fallen into danger, they that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith toward the Almighty, such as have works and faith, that's faith and works. Know this, therefore, that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. They that be which be left behind are more blessed. They which be left behind are more blessed. They which be left behind are more blessed. This is the meaning of the vision, whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea. The same as he whom God, the highest, hath kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature. And he shall order them that are left behind. And he shall order them that are left behind. And he shall order them that are left behind. Which means if you make it to the end, Christ will literally give you instruction. Can you imagine Christ talking to you? 
Yeah, just like his disciples. Now that's hot. You went from reading the Bible, and taking orders, hearing his voice say your name. Oh, that's hot. That's that's a privilege. That's the greatest privilege for you to stand amongst Christ and receive orders from him. That's a privilege. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came as a blast of wind and fire and storm, and that he held neither sword nor any instrument of war, but that he, or excuse me, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. Brothers and sisters, we do have a deliverance. Can you say amen? Amen. Let's endure. Endure. It's not all doom and gloom. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on earth. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, one realm against another. Did you hear what that is? So the angels will be fighting with demons. We will be fighting with people. Maybe we even may fight with demons as well. One realm against another, spiritual versus the physical. Oh, it's going down. Are you ready? This is seeing the people doing the hip thrusters. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, man, if y'all don't go sit down, <laughs> what you gotta do? You better, you better, you better pray and, and show the Most High with, with some works. I don't care if you curl in a twelve pounder. You better curl that thing like it's a hundred pounds and be happy. Show the Most High something, cause you're not gonna make it unless you're ready to fight. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Better yet, I hope you hear what the scriptures are saying. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass and the signs shall happen, which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared. Then shall my son be declared. Then shall my son be declared. Whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle, and they have one against another. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them, willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. But he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion, and Zion shall come and shall be showed to all men, being prepared and building, like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. And this, my son, and this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest, and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented which are like unto a flame, meaning the torments that will come to them for an eternity. And he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto me. Whereas and whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him, those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their Land in the time of Hosea, the king who Salmanassar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried away, he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country whenever mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. 
And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through the country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Arsareth. Now, I'm going to go into this just for the sake of history. Okay. And may you receive it. Yeah, not. Okay. It's okay. Hey, you know, maybe whatever. But watch this. Hold that thought. One moment, please. Check this out. Check this out. Mm. One moment. Hmm. Let's see. I'll make sure y'all got this information. If I could get more than one. Hmm. Thank you for your patience, brothers and sisters. Okay. All right, here you see on the screen, the Jewish Encyclopedia. Okay, I'm clicking on the page, but here it says the name of the land, Arzareth, beyond the great river, far away from the habitation of man, which the 10 tribes of Israel will dwell, observing the laws of Moses until the time of restoration, according to 4th Ezra 13 and 45, same thing as 2nd Ezra, by the way, Columbus, which is that is not his name, Cologne, identified America, 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 Babylon with this land. Okay, now let's check out the page. This is the name of the land on the Great River. Okay. Far away habitation of man, which the 10 tribes of Israel will dwell observing the laws of Moses until the time of restoration, according to 4th Ezra 1345. Columbus identified America with this land. The name it has been suggested. So you could just read this. Thank goodness, my eyes. <laughs> but it says, the ten tribes may be expected to return or not, since the point is not determined in the scriptural verse, and so forth and so forth. So, some will return, some will not. How will people return? Well, guess what? I told you, I showed you the scripture. In order for you to return out of that place, you must first leave that place. But hey, what do I know? All right. Now, please understand that this is not just America, as in Babylon. America is that whole region. America, Central America, South America, Mexico, which is a part of America, okay? So that's all of that region. 
Most High is going to deliver all the children of Israel from the top to the bottom. Okay? Now, for those of you who are fleeing from Babylon and going into South America, you have a lot of work to do because your brothers and sisters who have been impoverished a lot worse than you in the South American countries, they may not have all the knowledge that you have. So guess what you're going to be doing? Preaching to your brothers and sisters when you flee. That's your job. It's not. But I'll, I'll go into that in a lesson of, of many are called, few are chosen. In fact, that'd probably be one of my next lessons. All right. Second Ezra. Excuse me. Second Ezra 13 and 46. Then dwelt there, then, excuse me, then dwelt they there until the later time, which is now. And now when they shall begin to come, the highest shall stay the springs of the stream again, that they may go through. Therefore sawest thou the multitude with peace. Now, people call me crazy, but when the Most High says he's going to stay the waters, he's going to make a way for the children of Israel and those following them and those with them in righteousness to go to the lands of Isaiah 11, 11 from the Americas, but not Babylon. Babylon has a different, you know, uh, they have a really special uh, uh, fate, which is death. But Mexico and, you know, Central America, South America, most high is going to have mercy and not like blow them up. And yeah, they're still going to go through craziness, but you have a job to do. Yeah. And a lot of faith is going to require those springs. Tell you that faith with works. Moving forward, but it says the highest shall stay the springs of the stream again, that they may go through. Therefore, saw us out the multitude with peace. Now, who don't want to see the wonders and the beauty of the Most High? I do. I do. <laughs> well, those that be left behind of thy people are they with, that are found within my borders. So these springs are leading to specific borders. Now, when he destroyed the multitude of nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. So Christ himself is going to defend us. I'm cool with that. I like that. And then shall he show them great wonders. That means we ain't seen nothing yet. We ain't seen nothing yet. We ain't seen nothing yet. Okay. But until then, brothers and sisters, I wanted to finish that off with that lesson off with that because I know a lot of these things can be scary. Of course they are. Someone says they're not worried or concerned. They lie. They lie. This is this is tough stuff. Okay. But I wanted to end that. End the lesson with that. Because you know, I, I want you to see that there's hope at the end. There is hope. Okay, what no one says. There's hope. Okay, there's hope at the end. And I hope that with sharing with you all these scriptures, you understand why now more than ever. Why the Most High says in 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 40. Oh, my people. Hear my word make you ready to thy battle and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth because who would live amongst wormwood who would live 
and stay when woes and disasters are promised. Why not leave? Why not be a pilgrim like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Christ? Why not be a pilgrim, brothers and sisters, in righteousness? The time is here, brothers and sisters, where you think of, well, your why. Why do you want to live? Why do you want this so bad? Why do you want to escape the woes? What is your why? Because as we are now in the time of wormwood, death is just a drop away. I hope you think of your why, because remember, look at two things, the godly against the sinner, the good against the evil. The fallen angels know their why as to why they have fallen. But what is your why as to why you will rise in righteousness with your head held high to stand up and endure for Christ. I love you all. Shabbat Shalom. Failure has made me who I am today. Failure gives you two choices. You stay down or you get up. Well, I'm up and I am fired up because I have figured it out. Dreams die in the grave, no eulogy for many. When reality kicks in, hell will have plenty. They moving like it's life, but death's all around. A bunch of lost souls happy just to go down. Laughs should be tears, and happy should mourn. The end gave birth, many evils were born. Evils are born, as many did reside. Failure was the husband, and Satan was the bride. They walked down the aisle, the broad and the wide. Satan swore at the altar, it was all lies, now they cry from deceit. Satan's filthy wiles, if you try with the devil, then you'll fail at the trials. I was born to win, not complacent, I gotta move, I owe my entire being, so I gotta prove. Gotta prove to the heavens, the holy potter, why I shouldn't be counted for an holy slaughter. If they ask about me, I say I gotta win, I push the words of God heavy. Daily thoughts of disappointment Did I do my best? So I owe more